One, two, ready, go. Resident and excellence. I am found from Mali and I am from the I am a precious learner. Nothing is too difficult for me to master. I will go with the intelligence. I am a girl. Good morning, everyone joining us today. Indeed, you are a cyber girl, and we're so excited to be welcoming our guests joining us from um, LinkedIn and YouTube. Today is the open day of the Cyber Girls Fellowship, and we are super excited to be welcoming you today. Cyber, uh, this event is hosted by CyberSafe Foundation. And my name is Confidence Stabling. CyberSafe Foundation um, is very, very pleased to welcome you today. And just before we begin the activities for today, um, it will be important for you to know what we are about as an organization. So CyberSafe Foundation is um, a non-governmental um, organization that is Africa's leading uh, non-governmental organization in the digital development domain. We're on a mission to facilitate pockets of changes that ensure inclusive and a safe digital access in Africa. We're doing this through a number of our initiatives. Um, one of them is what you're witnessing today, which is the Cyber Girls Fellowship. The Cyber Girls Fellowship is a one-year uh, program that is designed to equip girls in underserved communities with globally sought-after skills, positioning them to begin a career in cybersecurity and to uh, you know, grab opportunities within the continent of Africa and outside of Africa. And we are very excited to, to show um, what our girls have been learning and they're also excited to show off, you know, what they have been learning and what they've been up to. And we are excited to have you watch us as well as we do this. Um, we have our hubs in six states in Nigeria and we're spreading outside of, for, out of, outside of Nigeria in the next cohort. But in the six states, we have girls who have been joining us to demo in their different peer learning groups um, and show us their skills around incident response, um, around open source intelligence, around offensive security, um, and around threat modeling as well. Um, we have the girls here between the ages of 15 to 21. So they are young, but very, very bright and very eager to learn. Um, we have our hubs across six states in, Ad one, in Adamawa, which is in the Northeast. So basically in one state, uh, one geopolitical zone, uh, we, in each geopolitical zone, we have a state we are present in. So Adamawa, Koshiba, Kogi, Kaduna, uh, we have a hub as well in Oyo and in Enugu. And all of these girls are, uh, are present and looking forward to, um, to basically, you know, showing you what they have up their sleeves. But before we do that, we will all will be having a fireside chat with Dr. Reem Faraj Al Shamari, and I'll be taking some time to introduce her. Um, I would just want to check with the tech team that she's here. If she's not here yet, please can you just drop her an email really quickly um, to let her know that we can't wait to have her join us. Um, but for the time being, um, I'm going to just. Um, play us a video to see um, what our girls have been saying, um, you know, about the fellowship and about the impacts that we have made in these four months that they have been learning in the Cyber Safe Foundation Cyber Girls Fellowship. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Olufe Laoshideko, and I am part of the fellow cyber girls in Oyo State. My peer leading group is Ping Intelligence. Being at Cyber Girls has exposed me to a lot of mentors around the world, and the mentor personally given to I and my team members is Mrs. Shepard Akiomi, who is a cybersecurity specialist at United Farms of Alberta Cooperatives. Uh, we've had, I've had different coaching sessions where I've been able to understand the 10 hours poor vulnerabilities. I've been able to see in real time how to discover web works in web applications. I've had different training sessions 
where I've been exposed to what digital literacy is, digital ethics, cybersecurity awareness, cybersecurity, and a whole lot of different terms. Now, I'm able to use Kali Linux to discover web vulnerabilities. I can play around it and also even send in commands to it to do stuff. I want to say a big thank you to CyberSafe Foundation and all of our sponsors for giving Hello everyone, my name is Kesha Jasupo Asupo. I'm a member of Team Code Brigade, Cross River State Hub. This program has exposed me to mentors like Mrs. Yanisha Shilomont, Mr. Wafai Ewa, and Ms. Menti Edet. My coaching section with Mr. Matthias Ajibola has been an amazing one. He has taught us on mental attack and kind of threat modeling. I've learned, I've learned, I've been able to work on my time management, my emotional skills, and my communication skills. I want to say a very big thank you to CyberSafe Foundation for investing in us. My name is Thanis Robert from Northeast Innovation Hub, Adamawa. My peer learning group is Team Code Brigade, Adamawa. My journey so far with CyberSafe Foundation has been great, amazing, and I am more desirable and excellent than ever before because CyberSafe Foundation have given me the great opportunity to learn and exercise my skills. I have achieved a lot of progress in a short period of time with CyberSafe Foundation through learning of computer basics, fundamentals of digital safety and ethics. I was exposed to mentorship by CyberSafe Foundation through a platform on Zoom meeting and WhatsApp to help me get connected with my mentor, Mrs. Blessing of Suro. My coaching section with Mr. Emmanuel Sadiq was really great. I learned what computer networks are, Windows events, and six months. I was illiterate in cyber awareness. I know nothing about cyber awareness, but with the help of CyberSafe Foundation, it was easy for me to acquire knowledge. With the knowledge gained, I can now use the internet properly. I don't know how important teamwork is. I didn't know some official ethics like communication, dining, etiquette, online and offline networking. But CyberSafe Foundation has exposed me to a wide range of courses I didn't know before. I was bothered about the unemployment in Nigeria and how I would secure a job after school. With the exposure CyberSafe Foundation is giving me, I am very confident that I will not look for a job after school. With this great opportunity CyberSafe Foundation has given me, I want to say a very big thank you to CyberSafe Foundation and partners for the unique opportunity God bless you. That was an amazing testimonial, and we're so excited to see the progress everyone is making in the fellowship. And um, some really great news here. Dr. Reem is here. So we're just going to take our introduction and just, make, uh, just get you to meet um, our great speaker that's joining us today to share so much of her knowledge and her wisdom in the industry to benefit everyone in the Cyber Girls Fellowship and everyone joining us virtually from LinkedIn and, uh, and YouTube as well. So without further ado, I'll be introducing Dr. Rim Faraj Al-Shamari. She is a digital transformation leader of corporate solutions and digital oil fields. Um, she's a global thought leader in cybersecurity and digital transformation with more than two decades of experience. She is a passionate leader whose valuable contribution to cybersecurity and technology is recognized at national, regional, and international levels. She is a founding partner and board member of Women in Cybersecurity Middle East. She's also an academic and she also has academic and professional degrees such as engineering, MBA, PhD, and she's also uh, she's also gone through Harvard's Business School Executives Program. She has several awards uh, at national, regional, and global uh, levels, and all these accolades are so many, but we're going to mention some of them. She's a um, global EWF regional leadership. Uh, she holds global EWF regional leadership award. She's ranked number one at the IFSEC Global Top Influencers in Security and Fire. She's, she also holds the Mercer's Women 
Security Leaders Award and the Arab Chief Information Security Officer of the Year Award. She has contributed heavily in academia, including PhD research and MIT review articles. She is also a committee member in the esteemed World Economic Forum's program, Cyber Resilience in Oil and Gas. She recently did a tech talk um, under the title, Let Your Passion Lead the Way, to inspire others to follow their dreams. I mean, I am very privileged today to make welcome Dr. Reem al -Shamari. Please, let's give her a round of applause and welcome her in cyber safe energy oh my god Dr. I have watched your LinkedIn and you've just been showing how um how excited you are um to be to you know to be to be speaking to these girls and we've caught up with your energy and your passion to um to share your 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 your, your wisdom with us and we're so excited um some of the girls are here while some are joining us on link on youtube as well because we can't have all the girls at once here and you can see their comments scrolling in they're so excited welcome dr Ray. thank you so much <laughs> No, I can't hear you clearly. It's 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 a struggle hearing you. I can because I'm here. Uh yes. Yes. Can you say something again? Let me see if I can hear you. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yes, I can. Yeah. Clear now? Yeah, it's clear. But I but I can I can hear echo. Oh um, I, I don't know where that's coming from. Uh I'll try and fix that. Let me let me see where let me see how I'm gonna try and fix that really quickly now. Maybe put on a headset. Let's see if that works. Yeah. We just have to sort of think on our feet as quickly as possible. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. try to mute. Let's see if I still hear the echo. Yeah, echo is never the Yes, better. Much, much better. So, thank you so much uh, for this wonderful is it introduction. Much okay. better. Much, much better. Okay. Thank you so much, Confidence, for this wonderful introduction. Uh, for a minute, I was doubting, is she talking about me? <laughs> so, thank you so much. Uh, for all of that, you reminded me for so many things. Uh, but again, through our inshallah time, uh, you will know that we don't focus on what we do. We focus on how we can do better every time. So that's why when okay. someone starts doing, uh, telling us what we have done, we say, "Wow, we, have, we did all that." Uh, this is the passion that really leads us. That we need to give more. We need to have more. Africa has a very special place in my heart, and today I did a personal reflection in my in my post because I have Africa in my uh, you know agenda where after retirement I was telling my husband that we need to fly over to Africa and spend some time helping people in person and giving aid. But our cybersecurity community has been generous enough to expedite that plan. And, <laughs> with, with, with many opportunities, I was able to connect with amazing ladies from Africa and mentoring them, uh, leading them, and also learning from them. And today, thank you so much, Confidence, for this wonderful invite. But um, today, I'll be able to interact with these wonderful ladies and even be inspired by them. Thank you. So oh, much. excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Rim. Your, and your humility is just very admirable. Um, so I, this is a fireside chat and I will sort of make it as casual as possible while we ask the questions and interact and get to hear from you. And girls, if you have any questions, you know what to do, drop a comment and we'll quickly, you know, um, have your mute your mics and actually ask the question. You don't need to type your question to Dr. Rim. She wants to interact with you. Okay, so the first question is, please tell, you know, tell us all a little bit about your journey into cybersecurity and why you chose this field. Was there a special interest from your childhood? Was there an influence or some, or some sort of background that led you to cybersecurity? Uh, amazing question. And uh, when I saw the last question, I said, oh, my God, we need like two or three days to cover them all. <laughs> but let's just very quickly so we don't bore our ladies here. Um, uh, being in cybersecurity, I think uh, 
God puts for us, you know, different challenges through our life where it really prepares us to what is there. And I did not choose cybersecurity side, cybersecurity chose me. Let me put it this way. Um, I came from a, a family where we have strong women. And my grandmother was a role model to me, my mother was a role model to me in helping others, supporting others, even mm -hmm. if they don't have, you know, uh, the resources, they bring their resources, they look for resources and they help and support everyone else. So uh, from there, I have, uh, you know, get uh, seeing these wonderful and strong women and I, with my interaction with so many African ladies, including your self-confidence, I've seen how amazingly strong uh, African ladies are, are with their passion, with their excitement. So that passion was in me since I was young, uh, having role models of women in my side that I need to do, uh, you know, to make a difference, to leave a footprint in this world where I can help in making it even a better place. Uh, through my journey of, uh, let's say, you know, learning, I was always keen to learn. Maybe through your uh, introduction, you have seen that I have done computer engineering, and this is for our girls, huh? I've done my computer engineering, then uh, we've done, um, a master business administration. All my friends would went with the computer engineering, but I was the only one who flew out of the flock looking for something different because my mentor told me that it would be good to have technical background, then add some mindset of management. So you business, have yeah. a mixed mindset to be able to deal with all different situations. So I went with that master business administration, then did my PhD in operation management, and then uh, just recently, uh, we completed the executive Harvard uh, learning uh, program. My message here, learning never stops. Whether you have PhD, whether you have, uh, you know, a master's, whatever you have, you keep on learning. And I will very much keen on learning from you ladies today, inshallah. Don't get, you know, uh, terrified from my title. I learn from everyone around me. I learn from my nine years old uh, daughter. And I learn, I learn from my assistant. I learn from everyone who I stand and have a quick chat from. We learn life matters, and we learn, uh, you know, career and technical things as well in our community and colleagues. Uh, so very quickly, and passing that academic journey, uh, we did an amazing, uh, you know, journey in uh, our KOC Kuwait Oil Company. I had a great mentor, and this is again another message to our ladies: if you have a mentor who will sponsor you and guide you through you will be in a matter, better you know, uh, and more stable stage. So please ensure to utilize the mentorship that Confidence had made amazing efforts to provide it and uh, to the ladies. Because when my mentor has uh, you know, uh, put my, for me the career job, he, saw, he said, I will make out of you a wild card where I can, whenever I inject you, you'll be able to do success uh, you know, stories. And that's why uh, when I joined my work, I was never with the floor of the you know, normal familiarization. He was injecting me in projects day and night, exposing me to different IT technologies. It was wow. for me, it was overwhelming. I cannot say it was, uh, you know, <laughs> enjoyable uh, journey, but, you know, confident, it made me exposed to everything. And it made me, you know, eager. M my whole nature of career became eager. What's next? What's next? So today, even when I do an achievement, you will see me saying, what's next? What's next? That's why when you told me my achievement, I, said, I did that because I never look back I keep achieving others. I swear to God. <laughs> okay. So uh, this exposure to all of these technologies, uh, the digitalization of our oil field, you know, Kuwait oil company is a national mm -hmm. critical infrastructure. And uh, when we start digitalizing the oil fields, uh, we became, I became very much aware because I'm from, you know, uh, a family of strong women and I need to protect my people. So I need to protect our operators at the oil fields when you start digitalizing their operations. Because in, in the oil fields and OT, we call them operational technology and ladies, operational technologies is an, uh, a field where you want to learn and be specialized in cybersecurity because we have a scarce, you know, and huge skills shortage there. And we need women, smart ladies like you will always address that shortage. So when we went there, I was very much keen because in all this environment, which is assets, fields, energy, electricity, this is where you can see the cybersecurity has a physical arm and the mm -hmm. threat actors can compromise people's lives. 
through manipulating the safety systems, so manipulating the production and operation machines, and even electricity uh, power and generators. So from that, I was very much keen, before even coming to cybersecurity field, to secure these digital transformation, which I was leading at the time, uh, at the beginning of 2000s. And as I came, you know, progressing with this securing this digital transformation, my leadership thought that I am the right person to lead the cybersecurity uh, throughout the company. And I did that where, uh, of course, we did an amazing achievements in, uh, internally within our KOC locally and uh, within our country and within our oil sector as well as regionally. Uh, and we're still contributing at that level. Um, then, of course, uh, as you know, uh, I have been transformed to again lead another success in the digital transformation throughout the company for corporate solutions and mm -hmm. the expansions of digital IP. So this is in short, and sorry for taking so long, uh, what uh, brought me to cybersecurity uh, and what prepared me to really lead it and be, you know, uh, excel in it. I mean, that's a very inspiring journey, very inspiring journey there. Then so many lessons to learn. Uh, I, I just move on to the next question because I could I could stew on on your answer for that last question for the longest time, but yeah, when you started your career, did you see yourself having all these big accolades you have and these titles to your name? Uh, and what was your driving force and what keeps you going? Um, you know, what keeps you going? I know you shared a bit about this, but how do you also think you have managed to get this far? What kept me going, actually, confidence is my passion. Uh, my passion is my strongest weakness, if I can say that, wow. it's, uh, because uh, it really keeps me going. And uh, if I fail, and I fall a lot, and it's okay, ladies, to fall, no worries, we're humans, we will fall. But we will always be resilient enough to stand up and continue walking. Uh, we will lose, yes, at different times we will lose, but never lose the lesson. So when you lose, make sure that you win by uh, capturing the lesson there and going to the next phase. So what really kept me confident is my passion. I'm a very, very passionate person. Uh, I, I, I think of my purpose in life really relates to my character of making this world a better place, uh, mm -hmm. being a better human, leaving mm -hmm. a good impact to this world, raising my kids to following uh, even my better steps and becoming stronger together. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, was I expecting all of these uh, accolades? Um, actually, uh, it was never a target for me to reach or to collect these awards. My target was to serve people, to support people, to achieve, to serve my country, to serve my company. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when I do these success stories, uh, SubhanAllah, yani God uh, and Allah appreciate that and He rewards you through different you know, appreciation, whether it was from your leadership or through entities. And of course, today, I believe myself as another uh, award because I have the uh, great opportunity to see this beautiful, brilliant ladies of uh, Africa and from Nigeria, where I'm very much able to share my success stories. So um, just keep the passion and everything will come uh, as, as you move on. I mean, that's quite a very profound uh, response and a lot to learn. And passion takes you very far. I, I, I didn't hear this response from you, Dr. Rim, but I know you and I know you're very passionate. And I think in the, in the, in the post I made today, I actually used that word. I said passionate. Because it, it, when you're passionate, you can, any, anybody can tell, you know, and then it drives you to give extra and be more. Well done so much, uh, Dr. Rim. You're very inspiring. So I, I'd like you to also just um, give us a peek into your life as a global thought leader in cybersecurity. I mean, I read your contributions to the World Economic Forum. I'm like, yeah, that's a woman. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know get, give us a peek into your role as a global thought leader in cybersecurity and digital transformation. And what does your role at the Kuwait oil company entail? Okay, so... Uh when I, uh, I will give you the two reflections of the CISO and the digital transformation officer. When I was CISO and one of my team members were asked, how is it uh, when you work with Dr. Rim? The, he said, and he like used that metaphor, Dr. Rim is like running and we're trying to catch up here. Yani, 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 yani. <laughs> yes, this is what I keep running and I tell my people, come on, let's run. And this is what we always you know, try to see what else we can do, what else we can do. And when you lead by example, uh, you know, uh, confidence, when you lead by example, you do it before your followers do. They will have faith in you and 
they will have to do it. يعني, um, mm-hmm. Many of the things that they say, my member says, Doctora, we feel ashamed for not doing anything because we see you, you're doing it yourself. So we exactly. feel ashamed and we are not doing it. How can we do that? Uh, how, how can we not do that? She's already doing that. And this, uh, you know, trait, I learned it from my father. Uh, my father, uh, may Allah mercy him, he was the manager of, uh, of five refineries in uh, a sister oil company here. And he was over, he was a manager at that refinery and uh, of operations. He was going very early and, uh, you know, sometimes with the stereotypes, managers will go yeah, at, the, at the time, yeah, and he, 7 o'clock, mm-hmm. he would go like 6.30. He used to go 5.30, even the sun still not rise up and go wow. much earlier to, than his time because he was going to checking on the tanks and doing all the other stuff. And 30 years later, I was in a training, a coaching session, and the coach himself recognized my father's name. And he said, you know that your father was a leader by example, he was my supervisor, and I was a shift operator at that time. And we were feeling so shy. And, you know, uh, when he comes at the early mornings, as a manager and do the checkups while we are still young men coming a little bit late. So this is what means leading by example, and this is what I have done. Uh, and I don't tell my people go and do. They will see me doing it ahead of them, and they will follow. Once they start following up, then you can start building another thing. So this is one of the things that we have it in, uh, in the CISO uh, stuff. Also, another aspect of that life of that you know. Uh, 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 snapshot of my CISO life. Uh, I'm a mother of uh, wonderful boys and girls, and my youngest is the one that's always attached to me very much. She, she's like my shadow at home, and many of my friends in the community knows her. Her nickname is Tuta. She calls herself the queen of hackers, and of course, hacker is not about. Uh, and I always tell uh, even my daughter and everyone around me. Hackers are the one who help us as cyber defenders and CISO to secure uh, our, you know, uh, device, our community. Yet the cyber criminals are the bad ones. So there's an ethical hacker and there's, a, you know, a criminal hacker. So let's not segregate or let's not just choose the word hacker. So she's the queen of hackers. So she's not a cyber criminal, and she's nine years old, and she loves, you know, copying cat me and everything she does. You see her uh, jumping on Zoom imitating my team uh, team meetings with my team members imitating me in my uh, you know uh, in my decisions in my shows but i have seen even with my uh, younger generation that these ladies have amazing potentials sure. and uh, i believe the ladies who are uh, i just just seeing them to be honest my heart is just you know smiling so thank you so much for sharing the screen because looking at these ladies really makes my heart smile Mm-hmm. I know that they have much powerful passion than us. If we have like uh, 100, they have 1 million passion of uh, energy. And they will do things that we are able to do it much, much better. So we believe in you. And we believe that you will make our community in the, in the future much secure, much safer, and much stronger by collaborating together and by being mm-hmm. And this is what I keep telling my, you know, my family, my kids, and passing the knowledge. So, uh, this is a very quick, uh, you know, uh, snapshot of how is uh, the life of a CISO. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm always looking uh, what's next, how I can, you know, deliver more, how we can make it better, and we align this with all our team members because uh, confidence. If you do it by yourself, you're not a leader. Okay, there's nobody following you but you need to align all your followers with you, have the three H's, ladies, the three H's. What does the three H's mean? Which is something I learned from Professor Linda Hill in Hartford. Three H's means you align the head of your follower and your people. You align their heart, the H, and you align their hands. Once they have the logic that they are very much, uh, you have admission and they are convinced with that, and they find that what's in it for them, so their heart is bound with you, you will find them doing it by default and their hands will start working with you. So Mm -hmm. align the pictures and your followers will go by themselves doing your steps and even much better. And this is what you need to get as a leader and uh, as a team member as well. Oh, wow, it's three H. Head, heart, and hands. I'm learning so much myself. (laughs) 
I'm learning so much. I mean, these are great principles you are actually sharing, and we can't thank you enough. So, my next question is: What would you be looking out for? Some for if someone without work experience applies for an entry level role at your organization, what would you be looking out for? And how would you advise this person to do? Uh, in, uh, what would you advise this person to do in preparation to land a first job in InfoSec? I mean, a lot of the girls here, for example, would need that information to prepare. What would you? They don't have work experience, and you know how it is in InfoSec where someone says, "Oh, entry level role, so 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 years of experience, one year, two years of experience." So. How are these girls going to prepare to break in and sort of have that edge because people like you have told them how to prepare in advance? Amazing question. Amazing question. And ladies, I will give you just heads up. You don't have to know everything just to excel. You need to keep on learning. And this is what I'm doing. I keep on learning. I am curious. I love to ask. And this is something I even taught my team members and I never, never feel hesitating from asking. Feel, you know, be confident that when you ask, you're asking to learn more, to understand better. So never hesitate. And something I do with even confidence when I, have, when I sit in a meeting with some young members of my team is there, I ask questions that sometimes I know the answer. But I want them to feel the confidence that, look, team leader with PhD and Harvard is still asking these questions to let them know and it's okay to ask it's okay to learn because what is not okay is that you feel shy if i ask that they will think that i am stupid or they will think that i i am ignorant or i'm not too aware of that no worries ask learn be curious because cyber security field is a, an ever-changing field and we keep learning as we keep learning the threat actors will keep you know developing and we'll keep you know evolving and we we'll keep also evolving so that knowledge keep evolve we keep evolve and we start you know an endless uh, you know race with them they try to evolve to compromise us we try to evolve to defend our uh, you know environment our communities and our societies so my advice to you first you know, you need to have the appetite to continuously learn never stop learning i am learning Forget my PhD, forget my Harvard, forget my uh, uh, the A student or uh, you know graduating with honors. I still learn and I keep learning from everything. Uh, I look at uh, reading articles, watching YouTube's, uh, even watching my kids uh, and discussing with them because I, I love to see how people think. Uh, I sit with my assistant and we share thoughts and reflect together. So always keep learning, always be curious, and. Uh, try to build the knowledge for your own investment never do it for someone else once you believe in yourself and you say i will do that because i want to learn i want to be uh, to understand better once mm -hmm. you do that then you will have that knowledge and you will keep on learning so no, and today we have google nobody can say i can't know anything yeah anybody like you know let me just give you a very small uh, story my nine years uh, tutor came to me that the other day during the the peak of the pandemic and she said mom you know what uh, and I, i'm for her i'm always you know <laughs> ready to, to to hear anything because she's unpredictable she just comes mm -hmm. with us from nowhere and she said mom we don't need to go to school i said why are you saying that she said mom whatever we need we can just google it and we can learn about it and I felt very much, you know, awkward. What can I tell her? Because she's really, you know, she's right. With Google today, with the search engines, with the YouTubes, with the uh, TikTok, with the Twitter, everything, LinkedIn, there's an open source of learning. Who's ever there to be willing to learn, you have internet, and everyone is now accessible to this internet. Just have that will in yourself that I want to learn for the sake of investing in myself, not for to show off to my boss or to get the recognition of my peers, do it for your own. And everyone else will look at that showing and that star within you by mm -hmm. default. So focus on yourself, learn by yourself, and utilize all of this, you know, and technology that is now overwhelming us to the mm -hmm. better of making you, uh, you know, a better version of yourself every day. I mean, that's very profound. That's very profound. <laughs> uh, and I, I, don't, I don't envy you with having to answer those very tough questions about why they should go to school. <laughs> she went to school. Actually, she's going to school physically this Thursday. So, no, she's going to school. 
<laughs> okay. So my next question will be: How did you? Uh, how, how did your career? I mean, uh, earlier career choices lead you to where you are now? And I know you mentioned some of them, but was there a career mistake that gave you the biggest lesson and prepared you for your present role? Because I know, like. You, you mentioned about um, losing sometimes, but not losing the the, the the lesson in that in that particular experience. So, can you share that with us as well? Okay, uh, I'm doing this. For, uh, this is the first time I do this in public uh, because yeah. only because of these ladies. So, ladies, please keep on uh, the secret and also the, our YouTuber or whomever watching us. <laughs> uh, so, at the very early year first year of my joining uh, to my company i'm still curious and i'm still up till today curious so 22 years later i'm still curious to learn so um, we went with my colleague uh, who's now a doctor in uh, university of uh, kuwait uh, to learn about the uh, some you know machines in the uh, data center and unintentionally unintentionally we uh, just tried to open some files to just to read to them etc and uh, for some reason, that machine, which was shouldn't be any uh, critical, uh, indirectly brought up something down. And within seconds, within seconds, uh, the whole you know uh, work and the whole team was within within data center looking at us. What have you done? And what has been done? Now we have disrupted a service unintentionally, and that the whole company knew about it. So uh, at that matter, uh, my su my supervisor, which was my mentor, uh, and I'm still for 12 years he was my mentor. He and he's the one who put that road of a white card for me roadmap. He called me to his office and he gave me the uh, first uh, lesson of uh, you know you are learning and that's okay, but never you know touch any critical and live machines while you're doing that. So for me, I had that lesson. I knew that I. I am curious enough, but we will always be very much careful when we learn and touch like, you know, live machines, etc. So that was a mistake. But uh, the, the lesson learned that he recognized and he encouraged me to keep on learning. But just to be sure that when we do this learning, we become more careful. So that was a lesson and this is a mistake. And that was in my first year. Yet that first year was just a start of success stories and other mistakes coming on. And we keep learning, ladies. Yani today I will do another mistake. Tomorrow I will do another mistake. But I keep learning. And it's OK to lose, as uh, wonderfully confidence has memorized that line, but never lose the uh, lesson. We're not perfect. We're not angels. We're humans. Mm -hmm. And humans make mistakes. So it's OK to make mistakes. But you need always to learn from it. That's so, 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 such a great lesson. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, so my next question is, was there, was there ever a specific time or experience where you wished that you had, you know, you had done something differently in your career? And if, if, and if you were to do it over, what would you change in that particular, um, experience that you had? Maybe, uh, you know, that, what, what would you have changed in that experience that you wish you had, you know, something you had wished you had done, um, different in your career? And what would you have changed if you had the opportunity to have, Rewind time and do it over again. Uh, you know, uh, with the Harford experience and journey, uh, I, I, uh, a, a good skill has been, you know, matured in me, which is was active listening. And um, the active listening principle, and again, this is another uh, listen uh, and hopefully a takeaway for our ladies here, that when you listen, when you listen to others talking, especially, you know, in work or in meetings or even in social, communities, etc. Mm -hmm. When you listen to them, listen with, to them with the uh, intention not to reply back, to understand better what they mean. So when you reply back, you can reply with another question to understand them better. Usually confidence when we listen to people, we're like, our mind says, I'm going to say that, I'm going to defend that, I'm going to do that. You know, we're just listening to see how we, how we can defend ourselves. True. And this, uh, making our mind busy with how we can defend ourselves prevent us from understanding other people's perspective, being able to put ourselves in his shoes and see the picture where he's seeing it from our side. So mm -hmm. my learning or my uh, the things that I will be doing now differently, I remember that before uh, Harvard, I was in many, you know, because we're women, uh, we're in a very challenging, you know, career set, so we're being challenged all the time. 
but what I will be doing uh, differently instead of listening to defend myself, and that was any based on facts, etc. Mm -hmm. I will change myself that I will listen to understand better and see what he's seeing from his perspective or her perspective and try now mm -hmm. to reply back after understanding the whole thing uh, more better. So we, I have matured in that skill and uh, yes, if time goes back, I will utilize it much more better in the other situations. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, active listening is, is quite a thing. I mean, actually the way you broke it down right now, we usually just listen to just respond, you know, defend, you know, yes. make a point, you know, or make a counterpoint, you know, but if we listen with, I think listening with empathy as well, where you're yes. trying to put yourself in the other person's shoes, to be able to fully understand what the person is saying. I, I, that's very, very profound. And especially as a leader, I think that's a very key skill that um, everyone who aspires to be a leader like yourself should have. Okay, so oh, my next question is, oh, sorry, you're going to say something, Dr. Yes, yes, when you said the listen with empathy, uh, mm -hmm. there was an article I just read about that, uh, leading with empathy. Empathy, yeah, I read that article. <laughs> for HPR, yeah, I helped with the, I think it was for Forbes. Leading yeah. with empathy is the most required skills, especially at the current times with the COVID, with people being unstable, being unsecure. So leading with empathy is one of the things that you need to do it, and listening actively comes under the umbrella of that leading with empathy as well. So thank you for bringing it up. Thank you so much. So apart from being a cyber boss, yeah, what do you spend your, your spare time doing? Do you exercise? Do you read books? Are there some good habits you would love to share with us and hope the girls pick up on and sort of also, uh, uh, you know, begin to do from today? Just share with us. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh... I, I really don't like the cyber boss title. I like to be uh, called a cyber a leader or a servant leader. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, again, another uh, story with my tutor. Now, all the ladies will be known to her. She came to me a couple of days ago and she said, Mom, when I grow up, I want to be a servant. Uh, I want to work as a servant. So I told her, Why? And I told her, Do you think that? She said, mm -hmm. Because I want really to help people. I want to be. Uh, I, I want to see people smile when I give them help. So I, I want to be a servant. So I said to her, if you work hard to become a servant leader, you'll be able to help these people more powerful. You'll be mm -hmm. able to help them even much better and much stronger. So mm -hmm. think with this mindset that I will get more power to help these people, and mm -hmm. with power, these people will be more, you know, grateful and more even, you know, benefited from that aspect. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, being a servant leader is something that for me is one of my life purposes where I am here not to uh, become a bossy or manage. I'm here to serve others. I'm here to you know support them, to empower them, to give them, to put them on the right way because mm -hmm. uh, we're not here forever. And this is what I keep telling my team members. I'm here for a certain time and I'm leaving. This mm -hmm. chair wouldn't be mine if it was there forever for the one who's be before me. And I'm not here forever. So what we're here for is that we need to serve others, put an impact in their lives, because mm -hmm. we, do, we do that by saving them, and make our lives mean means something, because we're human at the end uh, of the day, and making people smile is something that really makes my heart smile. Uh, so uh, what do I do now? I was trying to uh, run away from your question, but <laughs> Uh, I love exercising, uh, and sometimes uh, I exercise very hard on my, uh, again, two things, because she's like my shadow. She says, why are you doing that? Are you becoming a gymnastic? <laughs> I'm not becoming a gymnastic, Tuta, but I want to still race you and beat you in the race after 10 years from now. So I like doing exercises because it's good to work out. Well, we, in cybersecurity, we need to release the, uh, you know, the pressure. pressure. The, yeah. So exercise is a very, and working out is a must to take care of yourself. Yeah. And uh, one of the things also I like art. Uh, I used to, uh, you know, uh, not draw art, but I used to, you know, imitate drawing. So uh, when you give me like a sticker, I can just imitate it and, uh, very nicely. And I stopped doing that for the past 15 years. <laughs> just very small, small things from now there. Mm -hmm. I love poetry. I enjoy uh, listening uh, to poetry and uh, um, and relaxing. For us, cybersecurity, we just enjoy relaxing, doing nothing. Sometimes it's for us the best thing ever. That is. 
<laughs> exactly. I mean, th that's 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 very cool to hear all of these things that you. you so, w w what that question was aimed at for us to achieve as well was to show the girls that um, there's the other sides to life as well. Yeah, and yeah. those sides are equally important. Uh, I've heard you speak about your your daughter, for example, uh, and it is beautiful to see all of those sides and to be able to see that you can juggle them with this career is very inspiring as well. Um, and it's also motivating for girls to see that you're having all of this going uh, and living a balanced life to a great extent. So thank you so much for sharing that much. So I'm going to ask a big question because it's like many questions in one. What are your hot tips for cyber girls fellows who are on the onset of their careers in cybersecurity? Um, you know, are there habits they should build? What do you think is a waste of time that they should not engage themselves in? What has helped you get to where you are? And what practical advice would you have for cyber girls who want to set off in a similar direction? So it's sort of like a really huge question in one, and I hope you're able to carry on to get it. <laughs> okay, uh, for you to, be, to you know, go to up to the ladder, you, know, mm -hmm. you need to be aware of the facts. Knowing is half of the battle. Knowing is half of the battle. So you need to know that in cybersecurity, it's overwhelming and it's okay. And you will have burnout and it's okay. And once you feel you know, you're very much close to that burnout, you need to, to have a self-care uh, about yourself and just, you know, go back uh, and relax. Uh, I, have, uh, I had uh, recently COVID-19 and uh, through that struggle, what, it wasn't as, uh, an easy struggle to be honest, but I came out with the learning. So again, we're learning from everything we go in our experience. So I came out with this learning, which you have touched base on. It. When you're a senior level, uh, you and you're passionate, you always have that, you know, um, fear of guilt of trying to balance both. You're passionate about your work, you're loving what you do, and you're doing what you love, and you're still so passionate about your uh, family, about your friends, uh, you, especially if you're humorous, uh, which is something that's, uh, uh, within me uh, but i sometimes miss that par part of me because most of the time i'm at work and with very much foreman and we miss that one so i have come to a conclusion that uh, you need first uh, to be uh, you know to have self-care in order for you to be able to reach above you need to have a very good self-care of yourself your uh, yourself and your health is number one Everything can follow later on, but you need to have self-care. Number two, you need always to put priorities. So there's no balance. And uh, this was one of the things that really killed me when I went up uh, to the senior level because work was so much overwhelming and I felt very much guilty about my family and all, but they support me, they, they appreciate and they understand. But the internal passionate was always, you know, killing me of, of saying, uh, I'm missing these moments, I'm missing these moments. Mm -hmm. And I have asked confidence every executive woman leader I have seen, it, even in, uh, in Hartford, every professor I have, I have asked there as women, how we can do that balance? How we can really do the rightful balance that we don't feel inside of guilt, you know? And they told me of the, uh, one of the panel sessions with uh, women executives, I found that magical answer that really fits my character. Uh, they told me there's no, balance, which is 50 you forget that. Take it out because it will kill you. There's an integration. Oh. So with integration, you'll be present at some moments and there will be peaks uh, at your work, so you need to be present. And there will be peaks at your life when you need to be present. So be present at these moments and know that it's an integration. It's a musical note where things integrate to each other. Don't ever think about 50-50 because it will kill you. I've been there. <laughs> I've done that. It killed me. So once I knew that it's an integratable uh, you know, uh, relationship and you have priority, your family should come first and then your work. But you love your family and you love your work. So you'll be present at these moments where each will be requiring you. So my, again, uh, advice to my ladies, in the first, take care of yourself. Number two, Put priorities because with these priorities you will be able to man maintain that integration and make sure that you will not have that fear of guilt. Number three, you need to be confident and you need to love mm. yourself. Be you. Don't be anyone else. 
Remember that each one of you is a limited edition. And I keep saying that to every young rising star and even our own selves. There's only one confidence, uh, you know, uh, uh, here uh, that is uh, around the world. There's only one version of confidence and there's no other version of you. So you're a limited edition of yourself. Maintain your genuinity. Love yourself. Believe in yourself. And never think, never think of what other, uh, you know, people's thoughts. Uh, never let it get into you because whatever you believe in yourself, yourself will reflect on it. It is us that allows other people, you know, thoughts impact us. It is us that allows negative, you know, comments reach into our internal, you know, uh, spirits. It is us who decide to build that shield by believing in ourselves, by being yourself, be genuine. People will know how genuine you are and thus they will trust you, they will love you for who you are. So make sure that these traits or these lessons there, by default, your leadership will trust you, you will be able, to, your customers will trust you. Mm -hmm. And you'll build your network, you'll build your colleague, you'll build your customers, and accordingly you'll go up the ladder. But don't forget the three things. Take care of yourself, prioritize things, and always maintain your passion. I mean, that's, that's so much, that's so many lessons wrapped in one. So I'm going to ask my very last question, uh, because this has been such an eye-opening session, and we've really, really gotten a lot from just listening to you. But finally, do you have any philosophy or quote that keeps you going on bad days that you can share? I mean, bad days will definitely come. The days are like, oh, my God, what's going on? Is my whole world falling apart right in front of me? So what keeps you going? What's that philosophy or quote that keeps you going in those days? Uh, bad days, uh, bad moments. You say, not days, moments. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in security. Uh, Okay, what really keeps me going, uh, and uh, this is my philosophy in life, uh, and I shared that with one of the great uh, people I have met. She was a chef in uh, Hartford, uh, you know, catering uh, restaurant, and she's amazing. Her name is Karen. Um, she had uh, experienced the uh, experience of losing her eldest son, I, and it was during the pandemic. I felt oh so sad for that and we reflected over the phone uh, as i kept my connection with her she's an amazing chef and she used to miss me if i don't uh, you know attend to the restaurants i was studying i'm like a bookworm i love i'm an a student so you will see me always try to study and all of that and when i don't show up to the restaurant she misses me says where you are so when we reflected she reminded me of something i knew uh, within my heart but uh, your question just brought it up again that god Allah is the best planner. He mm. always best plans for us everything. So, uh, and there's a, a prophet saying, uh, our prophet Muhammad said, if it was given to you the chance to see your whole fate, your whole life record in front of you, and you see what these bad moments has br brought to your life with better opportunities and you know much happier moments, you wouldn't touch anything. You will believe that God is the best planner. So when you go through these bad moments, when you go through this hard situation, why did he say that to me? Why did why am I why why am I the one who is always getting in trouble? Why am I the one who keeps like failing in that one? These failures will make me stronger. This uh, you know uh, that situation is actually uh, where a close where a door has been closed. There are ten other doors that has been opened, but because we keep looking at that door, uh, that closed door. We forget looking around and seeing what other doors are open. So whenever that bad day comes, just take a breath, have faith in God that he's our best planner. We're human, we're limited. Build that connection with God. Believe in yourself and God will be your biggest supporter and he will all knows what's inside of you and he will give you these recognitions. So confidence to reflect that. These recognitions was never in my mind, but God saw me giving so he's, this is his way of giving it back to me. When you give, never expect. I give her, why she's not giving back? No, I give and I don't wait for return. But the best return comes from the creator himself, God. So just keep that in your mind. I mean, that's, that's so true because I have also had those days. And 
um, where I've had bad experiences and I find out years after, oh, this was the reason I had the yes. experience to get this and get that. That was all for my good, you know? So it's, it's very beautiful to see how um, our faith also can help us in those, in those days where we're questioning why we're having these experiences. And to see that the grand plan is definitely for our own good. Thank you so much for sharing that, Dr. Rim. And please, girls, let's give Dr. Rim a rousing round of applause to say thank you. And can we just give her a thumbs up really quickly as is our fashion? Let's give her the thumbs up as well and say thank you. Can we give her the thumbs up? Thank you so much, Dr. Rim. Thank you so much, Dr. Rim. Let's say thank you, girls. I'll mute your mic. Feel free and don't Thank, Thank, so Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Somebody say shukran. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. It's, it's music to my ears to hear your voices. You are amazing. You're rising stars. Let us see you in a couple of years leading uh, transformations in Africa. I love you all, and thank you so much for making me see your beautiful faces. Thank you. Thank you so much for this, for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much, Dr. Rib. I deeply appreciate it. Thank you so much, girls. Let's give her a round of applause as she takes her thank exit. You. Thank you so much, Dr. Rib. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Excellent. So girls, I'm sure that session was very mind-blowing, like we actually really promised you, because I learned so much. I learned so much uh, from that session, and I, I, I'm just mind-blown as well. And now we have come to the time where you get, to, you get to do your demos. And first off, we are going to be having Team Box Coaches Enugu come up and do their demo. Team Box Coaches, are you ready? Team Box Quashers Enugu. Can they hear me? Team Box Quashers Enugu, can you hear me? You just turned off your camera. Okay. Um, so we'll just quickly take a testimonial for now, and if the box watchers is not ready in uh, one minute, they will have to uh, forfeit their time to present in the in the open day totally. Um, I'm going to quickly play a, a presentation, sorry, uh, a testimonial, and we'll get going. And if they are not ready, they will be forfeiting their time to present. One of the cyber fellow from Kaduna Hub in Box Fashion. My journey started in June this year where I learned the basics of the computer system, their part, their tools, and also their function. The fundamental of digital safety and ethics. I understand what cyberbullying is, what digital footprint is, what digital um citizenship is and also i understand the use of using digital resources i also develop my media literacy though in this class during the month we had good presentation we had an opportunity to share my ideas and also build my presentation skills then to virtual collaboration and exchange i understand the method of connecting to internet how to communicate online the fundamental of google and microsoft in this, I have the basic knowledge of some Google suits like Google Classroom, Google Meet, Google My Business, Outlook, Zoom, and so on. By July, I met my mentor, Mrs. Tolu Alashe Ogumoyele, a cybersecurity and an IT control consultant from Ireland who has been influencing and guiding me through her. Um, within their journey through an interactive section. Mm -hmm. She had built my capacity a lot. Then we dwelled into cyber awareness where I learned some of the cyber terminologies such as viruses, root keys, cyber crime, and so on. 
I also learned some of the cyber security threats and trends such as poor password, where I learned how to manage and build strong password, cyber security attacks, cyber, engineer, cyber engineering attack. Cyber engineering is a psychological act of manipulating people in making security mistakes to include phishing. Then we have some of the ways of um, spotting these phishing emails. You see spelling errors, generic um, greetings. You see asking for sensitive information. Some of the tips of staying safe and dying. The soft skills that I acquired during this training are communication skills, so both verbal and written. I also have this test for knowledge and skills. It also built my um, confidence and also teamwork. It also provides an opportunity for me to know the techniques for job search. It makes me be attentive and data-driven decision-making. All thanks to the founder of Cyber Safe Foundation and also to the teams of the organization for providing this opportunity for us to achieve our dreams. Hi, my name is Precious Meso Malbona from Team Code Brigade, Calabar, Crush River State Hall. Um, how the college has exposed us to methods around the world. I've met Miss Irene from Kenya. I've met Miss Temilola from um, the UK. Our coaching sessions and what we've been taught. Mr. Ajibola Matthias has really done a great work. He has been teaching us on MITRE attack and um, hands on threat modeling. A few insights of what I've learned on digital literacy and cyber awareness. I can see that I'm digitally literate right now. I've, I mean, this program has really helped me. And then, um, also about when I've learned social engineering attacks and a host of others, Miss Confidence has really done a great work. Increased technical capability and um, some of the hard, soft skills I've acquired. I can now, I've learned that I have to um, critically think before taking actions because most of the times things don't really seem how they, how they look here. I just want to say a very big thank you to CyberSafe Foundation and every sponsor. You guys don't know what you've done for us. We really, really appreciate you. Thank you for investing in us. Hi, everyone. My name is Mary Jitu from Coach Back Hub and Code Brigade. The fellowship has really exposed me to different mentors across the globe, like Ms. Irene, Ms. Letty, Ms. Wapai, and so many others. So my coaching sessions with Mr. Matthias Achibola has really been amazing. I learned on Mitre Attack and Hand Threat Modeling. I've developed soft skills on um, communications and decision making. I really appreciate So I want to thank the Cyber Safe Foundation for giving me the opportunity to be part of this training. So thank you very much. That's excellent. I, I'm, I'm also so excited for you girls and for all of what you've been able to achieve in this time. So drums roll. We, oh, Dr. Rima has left. Uh, drums roll. We are going to have um, uh, Team Box Questions come in now and to present. Team Box Questions. Are you ready? You, can, you need to unmute your mic. How are you doing, girls? Uh, How are you doing, girls? They are fine, Good morning. Oh, Good, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us your names and what you're going to be presenting about. They are fine. They are fine. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So tell us your names and what you're going to be presenting about. Okay. My name is Christabel, bless him, she called me Marvelo. I am going to be walking you guys through on how to secure SSH access using a public key. Oh, that's beautiful. You have the floor. I'm not hearing now. I can't hear. Ma, we can't hear you. I just said you have the floor. Okay. Okay. Hi, you everyone. We're walking you through on how to secure an SSH access using a public key. And first, I'm going to tell you what an SSH is. An SSH is a protocol used to connect securely to a Linux remote server. It provides a very safe 
and secure way of executing commands, making changes, and configuring services remotely. Why we need to disable SSH password login authorized SSH server have a default configuration for connecting on CCP protocol. That is port 22. Because it's a well-known port, hackers now use it as a target to attack IP address, but they have a range number of uh, IP. They have a boat that they can use to scan a range number of IP address. You nominate yourself as a victim if you do not secure your SSH port. Okay, um, passwords on SSH, they can be put for using Hydra. So to secure your SSH assets, you need to make use of a public key. So a user named Sonia, she made use of a password. She made use of a password to to secure our system. Yeah, as you can see, we were able to attack the machine, making use of our IP address and also Hydra, the command Hydra then this year. We're able to make use of this. We're able to make use of this command. Okay. We're able to make use of this command to brute force the attack. As you can see below, it gave us a password. Okay, now I'm going to um show you steps on how to secure your, I'm going to show you, show you steps on how to secure your SSH using a public key. Now we'll have to move over to um, the Ubuntu. We're going to use Ubuntu for this. So let me get that. Now, on the Ubuntu, to get the um, IP address, I'm going to type ifconfig. And here we have the IP address. I'm going to be using this one, 192.168.56.101. So we'll actually bring up our Windows PowerShell. We'll bring up our Windows PowerShell. Sorry, our Windows PowerShell is up. Now we're going to begin by um, um, typing the SSH, SSH, SSH command, and then we'll type in the username and the IP address of the um the user we want to secure her ssh assets now we're going to the user is um sonia at 192.168.56.101 i'm going to hit enter and then we're going to supply the user's password which is i love you that was the password that was brute forced because she used the password instead of using a public key. Now we've gained access to the SSH server with this um, password. Now this is not a secure way, so I want to show you a more secure way on how to um, secure your SSH server. Now we're going to exit from the server so that we can generate a key and then we to generate a key, we are going to um, type. We are going to have we have to enter into the SSH. So we are going to cd into the SSH. Sorry about that. Um, okay, okay. Sorry, we have to um, generate a key gen. Sorry, SSH. Key gen, SSH dash key gen to generate both the public and private.
private key. Now, um, the asking us which file in which to save the both the public and private key, we're going to hit enter. And now, because we we have a public and private key that already exists in that file, we have to overwrite it. So we are going to type Y and hit enter. Then enter a passphrase for the um for the public and um, private key that we want to generate. So the password we're going to use is good. Hit enter. We'll enter the same passphrase again and hit enter. Now we've generated both the public and private key. Now to see to see our private key, we're going to cut ID and see that this place, these are private key, this SSH ID RSA. And this one is SSH ID RSA pub. That is the public key. I want to read this. Once we're able to um, see it, so cat ID underscore RSA. Sorry about that. Okay, we are going to see into the SSH folder. Okay, yes, yeah, now we made a mistake actually. Sorry, and um, we'll see into the SSH folder now to um check to read the public and private key. So we are going to cut um ID underscore RSA. Click enter. Now this is your private key, and this private key is something that should be for only your use. Like it should be the only one that can have access to it. Because if um, malicious um, attackers see this, they're going to actually cause harm to your SSH server. So now we are going to cut ID underscore RSA dot pub. Once we able to see our public key. Now these are public key. Now, um, as we've seen our public key and our private key, once we're able to copy the, this whole public key now into our SSH um, server, so we are going to run a command, SCP, the dollar sign, EMV. We're just going to run this command. Now, we want to copy the public key into um, authorized key files that is found in uh, SSH folder, which is on our um, SSH server. So we are going to hit enter. And now we need Sonia's password for that. I'll type it in. Now we've been able to um, copy it. Now we're going to go back to our Ubuntu. Sorry, it's taking some time. So we are going to run a command that's um, a command sudo nano slash et slash ssh slash sshd config. I'm going to enter the password for Sonia. Now we've we'll been taken to this file. You can see that all these are in um blue blue color or the ones that have ash and they cannot be red so we'll have to look for the particular one we're looking for which is a um, password authentication so we want to change it to we want to change it to no so that it can so that we are the only ones that will be able to have access so we delete it delete the ash so that it can be read and then you go here sorry um,
Chandler. Is it this one? Go back to me. I'll type no here and click and control X to exit. And then when I click on control X, I'll be given the option to save the file. So I'll type Y to save the file and then I'll click enter. I've been able to change that um, password authentication to no so that it can only be me entering into my ssh server using my passphrase so that's the best way to um secure your ssh server thank you very much wow that was amazing fantastic thank you so much Christopher, and everyone else clapping thank you so much for encouraging our first presenter that was amazing <laughs> Well done, well done, Team Box Coaches. That was amazing and very technical, but you pulled it up. Well done, girls. You deserve the round of applause you just got. Okay, so up next, we are having another team coming. And the next team up is Team Incognito Adamawa. Team Incognito Adamawa, take the floor now. Okay. Give me a second. That's what's happening. Okay. Team Incognito Adamawa is here. Excellent. Okay, how are you doing, girls? We are fine, man. Oh, okay. Tell, tell us your name. Let's get to meet you first. What's your what are your names? Yes. My name is Ada Chimalkus. I'm oh, Cecilia. Really? We are incognito. Okay, From our head, what what are you going to be? What are you going to be? Uh, uh, you know, presenting about. Tell us first before you start presenting. Yeah, we are going to be presenting about network analysis, where we, the team coordinator, will be showing you on how to install Sysmon and Splunk. Oh, beautiful! Okay, you have the floor now. Okay, thank you, Ms. Companies. From our previous from our previous open day, we got you we got feedback from our viewer, which said they can access six months or find six months in their system. This month we were taught on network analysis, which we incognito we are focusing on installation of six months and splunk. Right now I will be I'll be sharing my screen. I will show you on how to install your six months. And Splunk. Can you see my screen, ma'am? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen, and I'm sure you can see us. You can see us as well, seeing your screen. Please, can you come off this screen and show us what you want to show us? Okay. Now, I will take you on how to install your Sysmon. Before you install your Sysmon, you just simply go to your browser, to your Google. 
simply go to your Google and type download Sysmon. which is here, and click on it. You download the first one, you click on it. Yes, now this is our system, you go to the download and download it. Yes, as you can see down here, our system have already been downloaded. Now you go to your file to unzip the system you download. done here we have now we go here so now before we can install our sysmon we have to navigate in our command prompt down to the directory where our sysmon is in our desktop for now our sysmon is in our download so i will navigate down to the download by clicking to this to this place by clicking here yes by clicking here which you can see that it has shown me i'll copy it and go to my command prompt and run as an administrator Then I paste. I execute. Sorry. I change directory that is CD and I paste and execute. Then I will now go back to our to the page where we downloaded this month, when you scroll down, you see the command for, for the installation, which is here. I'm going to copy it and now go back to my command prompt and paste it. As you can see, our sysmon have been downloaded in the system. Now we'll go back to the Splunk where you also simply type download plug. But right now, you, you, as you can see, we have so many, you can choose any one, but we are going to use this first one. But right now we are not going to download plug because it's because of our time. We'll just go straight by showing you how to install this plug. If you want to download Splunk, you have to fill in all these credentials to, uh, to make you download it. But right now, since we already have Splunk on our system and because of time, we are not going to download Splunk. We'll just go to our Windows and type Splunk. Which you can click on it. You click. You click this box and click next. So now you put the usual name, which is incognitos. And the password. And you click on next. 
as you can see now our splunk is downloading it will take a a, a, a little bit time to our splunk is installing it will take a little bit time for it to finish installing so now i want to take you back to our six month last month we talked about six month so i just want to define what we meant by six month six month is a windows monitor that monitors our lock or events in the system while our splunk our splunk is a sim and what do we mean by a sim a sim is a security information and event management which which manage and control our logs and also analyze real-time events in our system so right now we'll, we'll stop here our system our splunk is still installing the our other colleagues the box squashers will continue from here to show you how to, to integrate your splunk with your sysmon thank you thank you we are the incognitor oh that's amazing let's give them a round of applause <laughs> Fantastic one there. Well done, girls. Well done. <laughs> and that was a beautiful presentation. Well done. And even telling us about what a sim is. Uh, well done on your hard work, of course, preparing for this uh, presentation. So up next, you, you can remove you can remove the device connect. Good. You can stop sharing. Great. So up next, we have um, another presentation. And that presentation is going to be coming from Incognito Crossover. Is Incognito in Crossover ready? And immediately after Incognito Crossover presents, you're going to have Incognito Kogi coming up. Incognito Crossover, yes. They are ready. Hello, girls. How are you doing? We're fine. Good morning. Uh, yeah, great. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, great. So what, what, tell us your name. We want to meet you. We want to get to know you and what you're presenting about today. I'm Abigail Johnson, and I'm Esther Oshie, and with me is um, Stella Praise. Oh, great. Okay, so just to give us some perspective, I think this team was um, uh, the team that was among top three uh, some time ago, right? Or did I get it wrong? Okay, but well, well, we're looking forward to a very great presentation. Maybe, maybe that's also me prophesying in advance. <laughs> Okay, great. So what would you be speaking to us about? What would you be showing us? Okay, Ma, we'll be talking about cyber threat intelligence with the MITRE attack framework. And we'll be, showing a demo against, uh, we'll be showing a demo on the mitigation against cyber threats in the mobile domain. Oh, beautiful. You have the floor. Okay. Thank you. So now I'm about to um, share my screen. Okay, but before we go on to, to the light of the screen, but before we go on with the MITRE attack framework, let's understand what cyber threat intelligence is all about and how the attack framework helps uh, help cyber intelligence. Cyber threat intelligence is the actionable knowledge and insight on adversaries and their malicious activities, enabling the Defenders and organizations to reduce this harm through better security. The attack helps you address how effective your defenses are. If you have a chance of, if you have a chance at detecting APT, which is advanced persistent threat, it also allows you to use knowledge of adversary behaviors to inform defenders, compare behaviors among threat groups, and learn about new adversary techniques. Thank you. All right, everybody. Now, before we go into our demo, I'll be talking about the Mind Attack Framework. So, the Mind Attack Framework is a free, open, and globally accessed tool. It was developed by the Mata Corporation that is intended to help with understanding how cyber attacks are performed. So, before we go into our demo, I'd like to give us a case scenario to help us understand how the Mind Attack works. So, um, now there, there was a robbery and kidnapping incident in two different houses at some, some time ago. The first house was, was attacked by a robber who got in through a hole in the ceiling, while a kidnapper got into the second house and held the people there ransom using a door that was held that was left open by its occupant. So when the police um, investigated the incident, they discovered that 
they were able to get in through the house through some blue holes, which was the open ceiling and the open door. And then the police were able to provide better security for the um, residents and to stop further um, future attacks by providing stronger materials for the um, stronger materials for repairing the ceiling and by and by um, providing better security doors. So now we can say that the two houses represent the different domains of the mitre attack, which includes Enterprise Mobile and the ICS. And the kidnappers and robber repair represent the cyber threat group's anniversary. The holding the ceiling and the open door represent the different techniques that are used by the attackers, which was the, the goal was to, act, um, to gain access into the house and the techniques they used, they used were through the open ceiling and the um, and the um, the open ceiling and the door. And finally, the police and the improved security measures represent the cyber security experts and the mitigations to various attacks, respectively. So, as the use of as the use of mobile devices becomes more often in the business in the business um, domain, um, the might attack mobile framework aligns techniques and stop techniques specific to attacking mobile devices as well as associated mitigations. This ranges for simple cyber security best practices such as vetting the mobile apps installed on the device, the ones that may require specialized solutions or cyber security investment. So now we'll be demonstrating the demo and we'll be showing you the mitigations against cyber threats on in the mobile domain. So now we're going to share our screen. Now we are the Mita Attack Navigator web page. We previously showed you how to get it. So all you have to do is go to your search engine, which is Google or any other search engine you're using, and then click um, type Mita Attack Navigator and the web page will appear. Then click on it and to bring it this way. So we are dealing with the mobile domain as I previously explained. Now we're going to click on it. And now, like a second or service. So the Mind Attack, which stands for Adversarial Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge Framework, is designed as a hierarchy. You can see it here. At the top are the tactics, which are the written in bold, which describe the goals that attacker may be attempted to accomplish at a particular stage of a cyber attack. And each of these goals has a number of techniques and sub techniques associated with it. As you can see, um, Esther, please can you hover, hover the cross on the sub techniques? So as you can see, these are the techniques and sub techniques under each tactics. And they describe the various methods that an attacker can use to accomplish a particular tactic. So now we are going to be dealing with um, the mitigations to um, cyber threats on the mobile layer. And we are going to be using a threat group or a threat software, rather, which is a TikTok group. So in our last open day, we had demonstrated, we had compared two um, threat groups, um, which was a TikTok pro and Trida threat software on the mobile layer. And we we'll today also will be using the TikTok pro to also demonstrate this um, demo. So now we're going to click on select. So um, the Mind Attack has brought out a new version, which we're using now. Previously, in our last open day, this, uh, this version was not available. It has merged the search button and the multi-select button together. So when you click on search, it takes you directly to the search. Click on search. It takes you to search and multi-search. And then you can see the, And also, without um, selecting a thread group or software, you can also see the various um, techniques and uh, techniques and sub techniques you use under each tactic. So, like I said, we're going to be selecting um, our TikTok group, and then we have the view button, which tells you more information about the the um, about the software. So, the TikTok group is, um, is a spyware. That is a spy uh, malicious spy um, spy software. So now we're going to be doing our course for instance, We're going to be working with three layers. We're going to click on show, and it has automatically highlighted the tactics. So now we're going to be, since we're working with three layers, we're going to be um, using three colors. That's we're going to use one and three for the high, low, and high value. And then we're going to score this as one. Let's score this as one. So now that we score this as one, it has automatically highlighted um, with red color, the first color, since this is the first layer, the, te um, the techniques under each tactic. So now we're going to also rename our layer, since this is the, um, I'm going to call this a TikTok Pro Threat Software. So now that we have a layer, we're going to create and um, we're going to create a new layer still under the mobile domain. But well, this time, since I said we're going to implement uh, implementing mitigations, we're going to be picking the mitigations. Now, these mitigations will tell or will show us what um, what it can stop, the techniques under each tactic that it can stop. So we're going to be using application vetting. So now, as you can see, even without selecting that already, it has showed us the um, the techniques under each tactic that it can stop. So 
app, um, application vetting is basically uh, making sure that um, apps are in conjunction with the security mechanisms or security measures. So once we click on this, I, highlight, I highlighted the techniques that is used under each tactic. So we're also going to score this. We're going to do the same as we did as the other layer. We're going to call this, I guess, yeah. And then we're going to score this um, too, since this is the second layer. This is the second layer. So and then our layer information, we're going to call this application vetting mitigation. Um, So before you go on, you can also see that it has also the new attack version has given us um, a method of seeing how many techniques we have selected. So you can see with the X there that it has shown us these techniques that we have selected respectively. So 46 techniques are applied in the application vetting mitigation. So now we're going to go to we're going to go back to creating there, and we're going to be creating layers from other layers. See so. I'm going to be doing mobile attack version nine. And then it has automatically highlighted the first and second layer as A plus B. So we're going to be doing a, our score expression because you want the third layer is going to be a score expression of A plus B. So now when we click on create, now this is our layer of operation. It can also be known as the application vetting mitigation implementation to the TikTok put the threat software. Our first layer was in red color and our second layer was in yellow color now this third layer is now in green color the green color shows the, the mitigations that the application shows that the, the, the mitigation which is application vetting can stop so under the threat software of tiktok Pro, in under execution that has command line interface the application vetting will stop the technique of command line interface which the tiktok Pro software might also be using then we have persistence which has program threats, persistent application discovery, and so all basically all the um the the, uh, the 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 boxes in green are the applications that will be applied, the mitigations that have been applied, and what they will prevent. So the micro attack layer allows us to do this for various layers, for multiple layers. So we can also create another, we can also give another mitigation to the threat software by creating a new layer. But for the benefit of time, we're not going to do that. But I just wanted you to know that you can still do it for as much so um um as much mitigations as you want so that brings us to the end of our presentation we can also put this in the report form so all we have to do is just download and um, um, export it and it gives us um, a more um, conducive report that we can submit to cyber foundation or anyone interested so this brings us to the end of our, of our presentation thank, thank you right very much all thank you. Time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jimmy Computer, right on time. 10 minutes there. Well done. Please just remember that time management is the key thing you're also checking. Please really remember that and keep an eye on the comment section. Uh, you know, they're definitely telling you and warning you there when time is going. So, girls, you did so well doing all of that. All of what you did in 10 minutes. You schooled us. You schooled us. Well done, girls. <laughs> Thank you, oh, great work, great, great work. And you see the comments coming as well. So well done, girls. You did amazing. We have up next, Team Incognito Kogi. Are you ready? Yes, ma. Okay, great. Team Incognito, uh, how are you doing today? Fine, 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 ma. Excellent. So tell us your name and what you're going to be presenting on. I'm Belkis Usleiman. I'm Ali Alimat. I'm Pelumi Mali. Today we'll be carrying out an incident response with the use of Wireshark and X Editor to extract and to analyze and extract JPEG file. Excellent. So you have the floor now. Thank be you, ma'am. Before that, we need to know what is Wireshark. Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer or an application that captures packets from a network connection, such as from your computer to the home office or the internet. Thank you, ma'am. Now we'll start by sharing our screen.
Okay. This is the wire sharp tool I'm going to make use of. I'm going to move the cursor to the menu bar to click on file. On the file, we are going to open and search for a pickup file, which is the digital investigation text. We can see on the screen, we can see this is the pickup file. We will have the destination list and the source protocol list. We can see on the first line, we have the packet list and at the middle, we have the packet details. And on the place that isn't highlighted is the packet details. We are going to make it, we are going to make use of the fine packet. As an incident response analyst at tech company, I have been instructed to investigate the capture network. So I'm going to make use of strings. We are making use of strings because we are to locate the relevant packet based on assumption that the document compri comprises of an image. We are going to make use of screen and strings. The reason why I'm make, making use of strings is because, because we should make use of strings because we have been given a finding, which is the bank card JPG. Then we'll click on enter. We can see on this packet list screen, we can see the bank card, which I'm going to right click and follow. We are going to right click and follow the TCP strings. We make TCP string, which is transmission control protocol. We make use of TCP stream because it allows us to gather the data that is related to the file. We can see on TCP streams. We can look on TCP streams. We have the red characters and the blue characters, which means the request and the response. The client sent a request text, which the server replies back by sending the response. And this, this response and request is unreadable because it's in ASCII form. We can see we are going to make use of the raw. We make use of raw data to easily find the file signature. The reason why I make use of raw is because I can easily search for the file signature, which I'm going to input the file signature in this find, which is the FFD8. We can see on the, the raw format, we have the file signature, which is the FFD8, and it's been highlighted. So I'm also going to make use of the trailer also. The file signature is a data used to identify or verify the contents of a file. I'm going to input the trailer. The trailer, the trailer shows us the end of a file signature. We can see at the end of the raw data, we have the file, we have the trailer there, which I'm going to highlight from this trailer to the file signature. You can see it's been highlighted. I'm going to make the light stop at the file signature, which is the FFD8. Then I'll click on it and copy. So I'm going to make use of the X editor. X editor to the software application that is used for analyzing, viewing, that is used for analyzing, viewing, and running of hexadecimal code file mm -hmm. on a computer. X, X, X editor allows us to extract the file from the raw data. Thank you. I'm going to open a new page on the X editor tools. So I'll click on Control and to open a new page. We can see on the screen, we have the X editor open already. So I'm going to paste the raw data that is being copied from TCP strings. We shall click on Control V to paste. You can see on the screen, 
we can see on the screen these are the raw data that has been copied from tcp streams so i'm going to save this file now shall click on control s to save for me to save this i'm going to open a new folder I'm going to open a new folder, which I'm going to write on it, incognito. I'm going to save this file as tech file. I'm making use of JPG because it's a file extension for the file signature and the trailer also. We shall save it already. File extension indicates the type of file, such as zip file, doc. But in this scenario, we are going to make use of the JPG, JPG file, which means Joint Photographic Expert Group. We are opening the, I'm going to open my file explorer now. We are opening the file explorer to get the view of the file that was saved on network. We can see on it, we have the tech JPG. So I'm going to click on this tech. To so open my file. We can all see this saved file. We can all see the document compromises of an image, which means that the, my investigation has been done already. That is, with the use of Wireshark and X editor tools, we are able to give out the ED information in the JPEG file. Thank you. I mean, that's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, my days. You girls are amazing. Amazing. I am so proud of you, Team Incognito Kogi. Like, that was very well put together. You really took us on that journey every step of the way. I, and I am so pleased. I'm so pleased to see this progress. I'm so pleased to see your comeback. Um, in fact, I can go on and on, but I am proud. I am beyond proud to see that you girls are making the best out of this opportunity. Well done. Well done. Okay, so up next, up next, where are we having next? Great, yeah. <laughs> so who are we having next? We are having Tim Incognito Oyo. Tim Incognito Oyo is up next. Tim Incognito Oyo. Is Timmy Cognito Oyo here? Yes, Timmy Cognito Oyo is right here. How are you girls doing? Uh oh, what happened? Timmy Cognito, this, okay, I think there's a network issue with them. Okay, so while they start that out, the comments have been coming in and they're so beautiful. Someone is saying here, wow, detailed, brilliant, and very relatable to Kogi's presentation. I mean, that was that was a technical subject they were taking on, but they made it, they walked us through every every step of the way. So that's amazing. I, I, and I can really, really agree with this particular comment that is very detailed, um, brilliant, and you stayed within time. So fantastic. Um, there's some other people also sharing some some really nice, you know, good vibes, good vibes, good vibes here from uh, Amina. Uh, well done, girls, also from Amina. And there's a lot of shout out for, for Esther Ushi from Koshiva. So uh, well done, girls, on that fantastic presentation and all the shout outs coming. And if you haven't already sent this link to your friends and families to join, this is a good cue to do that, uh, you know, because, again, we are learning a lot and we are able to show our family and our friends will be spending so much time doing. Um, so yeah, this, this one is coming in and saying, oh, I understand using, I honestly, I understand using my attack framework for mitigation, more from this demo presentation. Good job, um, Incognito Crossover. So yeah, that's um, sister girl love happening there, cyber girl sister love happening right there. And we, lo we love to see it. So fantastic, we're waiting for Tim Oyo, um, Tim Incognito Oyo, I think they're having a typical, technical issue right now and that's about the same thing also happening in Kaduna we are not able to have Kaduna girls join us yet because of a technical issue and we're hoping that um, they join us uh, as we go along 
So, but do, 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 does any of the girls have anything to say while we wait for um, uh, Timmy company to you know year to present? Any anyone has anything to say? Comment pass. Something they really learned from our uh, from our from our fireside chats with Dr. Reem. Does anybody have anything to say? You can just sort of indicate interest, and we are going to have you unmute your mic and share. Anyone has anything to say? What was the most profound thing you got from Dr. Rim's presentation? Anybody wants to contribute? Ah, everybody go for me, shy, shy now. Ah, ah, everybody, uh, is it that you forget what you want to say? What is your thought? <laughs> eh? Please, please, let's, let's, let's liven up. Let's liven up. Is there anyone that wants to share anything? Right now, incognito could give you, you know, they're doing star girl, star girl. They don't want to, you know, they don't say anything. <laughs> okay, but is there is there anything anyone wants to say, wants to share from uh, from today's session that has been very profound? Even if it's another person's presentation, good. Please go ahead. I have someone's hand up there. Go ahead. Good morning, ma. Good morning. One thing that I got was she said she was emphasizing on. Continuous learning. I was yes. continuous learning, learning, learning. That was what I got. Yes, continuous learning is a big deal, actually, in cybersecurity. I used to think it was just in medical sciences where you have to, have to keep learning, but it's very, very strongly advised in cyber as well. The day you stop learning is the day you actually go out of out of school. I say you go still immediately. You have to keep learning every single day. Okay, so since um, Team Incognito Oyo is experiencing issues, is Team Box Cautious um, Adamawa ready right now? Team Box Cautious Adamawa, are you ready to take the floor? Team Box Cautious Adamawa, are you ready to take the floor? Is Team Box Cautious Adamawa here? We need to move really fast. And we have an audience we don't want to bore. Team Box Cautious Adamawa. Okay, Vashti is also sharing here yeah, that one thing she learned is um, to continue learning and also have self confidence. Okay, so Box Cautious Adamawa is, oh my days, Box Cautious Adamawa is ready. Hello, Team Box Cautious. Team Box Cautious, can you hear me? Yes, yes ma'am. Oh, how are you doing today? All right, thank you so much. Yeah, we're fine, ma'am. Yeah, okay, so tell us your name and then tell us what you're going to be showing us. All right, thank you so much, Mrs. Confidence. And thank you for our installation team. Did you unmute yourself? Yes. Go ahead. And thank you so much for our installation team. All right. They have already installed the Sysma Force, which we are going to integrate it using the Splunk. And my name is Susan Solomon. And I'm Joy Anthony. Happiness Bob. And I am Amina Ibrahim. We are the Bob Squashers. Woo! Let's squash those bugs. Okay, you have the floor. Okay, before we start on the integration, we are going to know what integration is and why we are integrating six months with Plum. Integration gives us more visual interpretation of events and data. And some of the reasons why we need to integrate six months with Plum is for data aggregation. We'll be integrating six months with Plum for data aggregation because it summarizes the value from each event to create a single meaningful value. And also for correlation, event correlation enables you to find relationship between unrelated events in data from multiple sources. It also helps you understand which events are most relevant. And also for alerting, alerts are actions which are, which get triggered when a specific criteria is met, which is defined by the user. Alerts, as we all know, can be used to monitor and respond to specific events. And dashboards too. Dashboard contain panels that display data visualization, such as charts, tables, event lists, 
search box and they are used to represent tables and charts. So, so now I'll be taking you through the integration part. So I would like to, let me share my screen. So now, first thing, um, uh, we um, the team incognito has already installed Splunk on our system. So we'll go ahead and sign in now. When signing in, we are signing in because we doing the in downloading and installation you have to create an account you have to create an account with your phone number with your username and password so now first thing we need to do is to add data now we'll be creating our data so we'll click on add data Add data is to add what kind of data we are adding to Splunk. So, so, the question now is what data do you want to send to Splunk platform? We will be sending our data from our operating system. So, we will click on operating system. So we'll click on Microsoft Windows. That's our local machine. So the collection method is the best practices. So we can't change anything from here. We'll go ahead and click Next. And because we are, in, uh, we are doing the integration on um, our system only, so we'll click single instance so we are done with the we are done with the creation we'll click finished so now we'll be giving our um data inputs so to give our data input we have to go to settings click on data inputs So the local, um, this is um, the data input. So we'll be adding our data input from the local event log collection. So we'll click on that. So here are the available logs we have on our system. So we'll be adding them. First, we need to add application, add security system. So we'll also add Sysmon. So we'll scroll down to and check our Sysmon here. The reason why we can find our Sysmon on this system is be, uh, here is because um, the installation team has already installed Sysmon. So that's why we can find our Sysmon here. Yes. So this is our Sysmon, we'll also add it. So that's all we need for now. Then we'll save it here. So we have successfully updated our data. So we'll go back to and search and report. 
to click on this So, such a report is where we will find all the events that, uh, all the data that we have um, integrated, that we have updated. So, we will type in here hash to see all the events. Okay, so here are all the events that we have updated the data. Here are them. So we have successfully integrated Sysmon with Splunk. Mm -hmm. Hello. Good morning, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, guys, we just received a call from our advisory team informing us of an outbreak of cybercrime using WEMIC. We are now going ahead to set the alert for other upcoming events. So since we are setting the, the, the crime is using WEMIC, we just search on WEMIC.exe. Go ahead to search for wemic.exe. Okay, is this is going to show us no event because there have been, there is no alert on it. So we're now going to save as alert. This is where we will now go ahead to set our alert. Then the title of our alert will be WEMIC. Then the description here, as you can see, is optional, so we'll be leaving that out for now. The permissions will be shared on apps, so other apps can access it. The alert type will be real time. Then the, for the expiry time for it to expire, we are going to change it to 40 minutes. Then we add our actions. It will be triggered. It will be a triggered alert. Since the type of the cyber crime is ransomware, so we are going to leave it at medium and then we save. Our alert has already been successfully saved. So we we'll just go ahead to view our alert. Then. Our, in, our analysis team will be taking off from here. We have said the alert. Our analysis team will take off from here. Thank you very much for listening. Once again, we are the Box Crushers. Oh, wow. That's, that was great. Well done, Team Box Crushers. That was amazing. That was amazing. Well done. I, I really liked that your creative um, twist of adding a phone call. When you received a phone call, I really liked that. That was very creative and nice uh well done team that was well delivered and i am very proud to see how well you talked us through there was no point where you were you left us hanging you were talking through as you were doing what you were doing which was very good thank you for carrying us along please don't give them a round of applause once again team for big team box questions excellent so thank up you. next yeah up next you have team incognito um or you're their back from their short break because of um and network issues. How are you doing, girls? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What, what, let's get to meet you, girls. What's what are your names and what are you what are you showing us today? My name is Tommy Sin. 
and I'm love. I'm everything. Okay. Yeah, yes. Rebecca, we didn't hear you well. Though. Rebecca, we didn't hear you well. So you're doing very well now. Rebecca, are you very shy? <laughs> what is your name? Fantastic. Okay, great. So, go on. What are you guys writing about? What are you presenting about? We're going to be changing the admin's password with I'm going to be using cross-site request forgery to change the admin's password without the admin's knowledge. Wow, that's scary. <laughs> All right, you have the floor. Go ahead. Well, we can hardly hear you. Well, we can see. I already said you have the floor. You can go ahead. Okay, so ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So we're starting with cross sites for forgery request. Request forgery. So what is cross site request forgery? Cross site request forgery is a is an attack vector that allows a web browser to perform an unwanted action in an application where the user is already logged in. However, cross sites Cross-site request forgery. Cross-site request forgery attack is used to send malicious requests from an authenticated user to the web application. So a cross-site um, request forgery is on is mainly focuses on changing states and not stealing data. Thank you very much, love. <laughs> So, with love's explanation, I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the admins. I'm going to change the admins password. And first, I'm going to show you my screen. And as that is loading, I'd like to explain a true life story that happened to me um, some years back on Twitter. The major aim of cross site request forgery is to, it uses social engineering to play with the, um, with the, Victims mind. If you don't use social engineering to, if you don't, if you don't social engineering, you can't because I request for a drink. Someone sent me a link on Twitter and said, okay. "Click to check your your stalkers who have been stalking your page." And when I clicked on that link, he sent the link to almost all my followers on Twitter. That was an exact that was an example of cross request for a drink because I did not intend to do that. When I clicked the link, it had access to my account, admin access, and then it sent that to every single person that was following. I'm trying to share my screen. I'm trying to share my screen as well. My phone is not working. I'll share my screen now. It's not working. My friends are trying to share, to share our screen and it's not working. You should have practiced that before now. The huh? same. Uh, you should have practiced that before now. The same access you had, you have to share your screen is the same access everyone has. No, I'm clicking on it and it's not working. So now I'm in Kali Linux and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. So I'm going to log into my Kali. And the first thing I'm going to do is to check for my IP address on Kali Linux. So to get my IP address on Kali Linux, I'm going to click if config. I show me I show my IP address, but I actually need my Metasploitable's IP address to access it. So next, next I'm going to go to my 
browser and I'm going to paste my IP address and edit it. Let me now. I'm going to be doing that on DVWA. That's damn variable web application. Our username is admin and password is password currently. That's the password. Login. So, if what we're going to do now is we're going to, since we're going to use cross site request forgery, we're going to learn how to use cross site cross -site request for forgery to change the admin's password without the admin's knowledge. So this is actually where it's meant to go to change password, but this is a form, it's an HTML form. And in order to do what we're going to do, I'm going to inspect the code. To inspect the code, I'm going to left click and select inspect elements. So let's click inspect elements of okay. you. So that's it. And if you look at this, we can see the body of the form. You can see the form. And in order to edit it, we are going to let's click again and edit as HTML. And with that, we'll just copy the code. That is the code for the HTML code for the whole form. It's control, control A, control C, it's copy. And then back. So if you paste it here, control V to paste it, this is the this is the code for the form. And for us to do that, we're going to edit the code. Because of time, I'm just going to show you the code being edited. Um, we're going to change the action with get request. The get request, get request actually just tells the server to give you the particular web page. And it's not advisable to use get request because get request if you use get request on your web application, it is being it is, it is very, very vulnerable to cross site request forging. So, and we also made sure that the value was hidden. And we're going to change the password now to 1236, as it's been highlighted here. And we put in a JavaScript to get the element by ID using the get request still. And now, what the victim, and what we're going to do is we're very going to save this as crsf.html. Um, if we host this particular HTML file on the web and we just like change the web element and put um something else if the admin should click on it it's going to change the admin's password so first i'm going to cancel here I'm going to cancel here minimize and then let's say the admin just clicks on the link crsf.html it's going to redirect back to the page and as you can see the password has been changed so now the password was password before take notes and if i log out and I want to log in again as admin. Since I changed the password to 1236, as I've logged in as admin, and I'll change the password to 1236. Login, as you can see, I have access to it because I changed the password without the admin's knowledge. So um, there are some things and there are some steps I'm going to take in order not to be vulnerable or vulnerable to this type of attack. And how we can save ourselves from attacks like this is by as a web as a web developer make sure that you don't use get request on your systems using cookie not using the same size cookie as how it's meant to be so thank you very much for watching our presentation wow let's give them a round of applause i mean let's give them a round of applause this was such a beautiful presentation uh thank you for walking us through and coming back even from um the technical difficulty you had well done well done girls um that was beautiful i really enjoyed your presentation so great we're going to go up next to the next team um presenting as well after this fantastic presentation from uh, from team uh team box coaches sorry did i get that right team incognito you know your um thank you for my for that great presentation so immediately after that we have team uh team code brigade koshiva team code brigade koshiva are you ready or is it sorry sorry i think it's box questions that damawa has gone on so yeah code brigade um koshiva you're up next <laughs> how are you doing girls yeah fine mom, fine, mom. Fine, mom. Excellent. So tell us your name and what you're going to your names and what you're going to be presenting about. 
Uh, my name is Patience Asuko, and this is Nora, Doris, and Precious. But we are Excellent. doing investigations against cyber threats with the Mita Attack Navigator. Oh, beautiful. So you have the floor. Take your, take your time. Stay within time. Or rather, stay within time, not take your time. Stay within time and be relaxed and ace this. Go ahead. Okay. I'm sure by now we will be familiar with the Mita Attack Navigator. For those that followed us in, on our last presentation, where we talked about the Mita Attack Navigator being globally accessible, knowledge, knowledge based of adversary tactics and techniques based on real world observations. On our last presentation, we did a demo on how we combine two threads together to generate a report which could be sent to Blue Team. Today, we'll be using the Mita Attack Navigator to work on threat intelligence by providing mitigations of cyber threats. But we will talk, we will take um, a brief look at what threat intelligence is about. Um, threat intelligence is an information. I'm, I'm Threat intelligence is an information about threat and threat actors that help mitigate harmful events in cyberspace. Now, what does threat intelligence do? Threat intelligence is the information an organization uses to understand the threats that have, will, or are currently targeting the, organi the organization. This, this information is used to prepare, prevent, and identify cyber threats looking to take advantage of valuable resources. Why do, we need, um, why do we need threat intelligence and how does it work? Threat intelligence enables us to make faster, faster, more informed data back security decisions and change their behaviors from reactive to proactive in the fight against threat actors. Strategic cyber, tra strategic cyber threat intelligence forms an overall picture on the intents and capabilities and malicious cyber threats, including the actors, tools, and tactics tools, tactics, and techniques and pro procedures through the identification of trends, patterns, and emerging threats and risks in order to inform in, in order to inform decisions and policy makers or to provide timely warnings. Okay, so we are going to take a quick look at the mitigations. For a brief introduction, miti mitigation simply means finding solutions to problems. So there are five steps in creating a mitigation. The first, step, the first step is identifying the risks. The second step is perform a risk assessment. The third step is um, prioritize. The fourth is track risk. And the five is the fifth step is implementation and monitoring progress. So now we are going to start sharing our screen. Okay, so um, as we said earlier, we are, we are talking about the MITRE attack and we are going to be working with the MITRE attack navigator. So usually, like my colleagues in Incognito said, you just go to your Google and you type in your MITRE attack navigator. Now, the, the former team, which was Incognito, Quashibat, spoke on, they created a new layer on mobile and we are going to be creating are only on enterprise like we did in the last open day and so this is this is it we have the the techniques and the tactics so we are going to be creating our layer we'll go to the selection control and we'll be starting with the threads groups and under the thread groups we'll be using the leviathan And then we'll view. And then we'll briefly view on what the Leviathan is about.
Okay. And then we'd select the Leviathan and quickly view on what Leviathan is. It has highlighted the techniques used by Leviathan. So Leviathan is a cyber espionage group that has been active since 2013. The group generally targets defense and government organizations, but has also targeted a range of industries, including engineering firms, shipping and transportation, manufacturing, defense, government offices, and research universities in the United States, Western Europe, and also South China Sea. So we'll go back. After we must have selected, we we'll set up our color and we'll click on show. And the low value will we'll impute one, and where the high value is, we we'll impute color three. After we set up our color, we we'll score our color to color one. You see that highlighted the techniques used the the techniques used by Leviathan in red. And then we we'll rename the layer to Leviathan Threat Group since it's under a threat group. After this route, we'll create a new layer, see your enterprise. This time around, we'll be using the mitigations under the selection control. And we'll be using the application developer guardian. We'll select, because of time, we won't be able to view that. It has highlighted the techniques used by application developer guardian. And we are going to set up our color again. Still color one and three. Then we'll score our color to color two. It has highlighted to yellow. So these are techniques used by the application developer guardians. And then we'll create a new layer. So we we'll, we we'll rename the layer to application developer guardians mitigation, since it's under the mitigation group. Developer guardians. All right, and then we are going to create a new layer this time around. But we are going to be creating it, joining both the threat group and the mitigation. So we we'll create layer from other layers, and then the do the domain we'll be using is enterprise attack version nine, and then we we'll score our expression A plus B layer A plus B, and we we'll create. So you see it has highlighted the ones that both use it has implemented the threats group and the mitigation together the highlights are in color green which is a valid account all these all these boxes that are colored green are used by are the ones that are implemented so we are going to be naming our layer implementation of application developer guidance so having done this you can also create other layers as you go but because of time we'll just stop here and then we'll create our report we'll download our report um, so, so we have been able to download our report, and that is that is all on the on the on this presentation. So, thank you for listening. Wow, 
that's an amazing presentation you've given us there. I mean, that, that's very well put together, very detailed. And I want to say a very big thank you. Please keep the, keep the round of applause on. Keep clapping for them. They did so well. Fantastic. And you stayed within time, which is a fantastic, which is a great thing. So your time management has really improved. Well done, girls. Well done. I liked how you took us through what mitigation even is in the, in the, in the first place before you started speaking about the tool itself and how, how it helps. So brave one, fantastic one. You've done a very great job. Please, let's give them a round of applause as they exit the stage. So as the accolades keep coming from everyone to say well done, we will now make welcome team um, Code Brigade in Enugu. Oh, they're not here. Where are they? Please, you need to rename yourself appropriately or you will not be put up on the screen. Um, up next is uh, team, um, team uh, let's see who they are, team Code Brigade Enugu. You need to rename yourself or I will not put you up on the screen. Okay, if they're not ready, we're going to call up another team just about immediately. Um, let's see who else is up next. Okay, so we've had a good presentation from Code Brigade Enugu, um, Code Brigade um, Koshiva. We have about four more presentations to go. Um, Code Brigade still hasn't named themselves, so I'm going to give the stage to Code Brigade or your. Is Code Brigade or you're already here? Code Brigade or you're great. So I'm going to give the stage to Code Brigade or you're. Please remember that if you're not renamed, if you're not named properly, you're not going to be here, honestly, because we've had a very full conversation about this thing. Uh, Code Brigade or you're great. How are you doing, girls? You're muted. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. How are you doing? Hi. I'm fine, Ma. Okay, great. So tell us your names and what you're presenting about. My name is Nicole Amor of Dono. And my name is Omo Shalom. My name is Olibu Informa. And we'll be presenting about reflected excesses protected with CSP, with CSP bypass. So we'll be bypassing the content security policy on a website that is vulnerable to reflected excesses. Oh, that's amazing. So who has been your coach and what do you have to say about the coach? Shall we? I'm yes, saying, so good morning, morning, everyone. Hold on, hold on, you're not listening. I'm asking yes. about your coach. Hi, yes. I said, Hi, yes, ma. We can hear you. Um, you're not you're not hearing me. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, yes ma. Can you hear me? Hi. So I'm asking, I said, can you tell us about your coach? Who is your yes, coach? What has your experience been like with your coach? Tell us about your coach. Okay, yes. Our uh, coach is Mr. Jerry, and he has done well to break down each term for us in a, to understand the detected excesses. So we're able to understand um, the underlying concepts so that we're able to like, exploit the vulnerability in the website. So Excellent. An amazing, Excellent. Amazing. Okay, great. So you have the floor. Go ahead. Yes. So, good morning, everyone. As I said earlier, our topic for today's demo presentation is protected exercises protected with CSP, with by bypassing CSP. Yes. So, exercise is precise protein. And do you know that um, in the last nine years, precise protein has been the most common but the most common vulnerabilities in web applications across the world. So process scripting is a web application vulnerability whereby an attacker injects a malicious script or code into a website and the in form of the browser site script, which is executed off the browser of a victim, of an end user. Doing this, they're able to steal session cookies, install malware and trojans into the 
browser of such victim. So today we'll be focusing focusing on reflected excesses. And as the name implies, when you when you inject a code, a JavaScript malicious code into a website, the input is reflected back to you of the web browser as alert messages, error messages, or any other response that includes the input requested. So today I'll be telling, walking you through a story of two hacker friends who are going to be exploiting a web application who are going to be taking advantage of a vulnerable web application to carry out an excess a, a reflected concise scripting attack so in, in reflected excesses they use um, social engin engineering by making these links attractive links that have excesses vectors attached to them, they send it to people who click on them and have this code executed of their browser. So we'll be sharing our screen now. Yes, so share our screen and yeah, I'll be walking you through as I said earlier that I'll be walking you through the story of two Akka friends. Yeah, we have Informa who exploited the web application by typing in an HTML code, an HTML code. By typing in an HTML code, she discovers that this web application she discovered that this web application acts on HTML tags. As you can see, she inserted a bold HTML tag. Sorry, I think we are having a bit of issue. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Can I can I cut you short there? The reason yes, we had this, the reason your your presentation is flawed right now is because your your hub mates are making noise and distracting us. Yes, ma'am. Your hub mates are making noise and distracting us. So we will we, would, we might have to ask your whole hub not to present because if you don't if your hub mates are not listening to you, I wonder why we should listen to you. Why are you girls making noise at the hub? She's talking to you guys. Okay, please you need to restart this presentation because we're distracted the whole time. All right, ma'am. Yes. Yes, we have a few seconds. And please, um, for everybody walking backstage towards timing them, give them a fresh slate. Let them restart their presentation uh, because there are no fault. Their teammates in the hall are making noise and causing a whole lot of distraction. And please, any girl that is, is going to be making noise going forward in any of the hubs, we are going to make sure that we have your name and you are going to you know, face some sort of punishment because I don't understand why you should be making noise while your own hub mates are trying to present. You're distracting them. It's not fair. If, there were, if other people were making noise while you're presenting, how would you feel? Please, um, anybody to the time, backstage, please make sure that um, could be get, get an extra minute for their presentation and that they have a clean slate. They are starting off. They actually have 11 minutes now. Let's listen to them. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Ma. So as I said earlier, our topic for today is reflected excesses protected by CSP with CSP bypass. Do you know that in the past nine years, the most common bug vulnerabilities in websites is cross-site scripting, which is XSS. And this is a reason why we should actually talk about this vulnerability. Cross-site scripting is an OWAP top 10 vulnerability, web application vulnerability, whereby attackers inject malicious JavaScript code into a website in form of the browser side script, which is reflected, which which is executed in the client's browser, in the end user's browser. 
and today we'll be focusing on the reflected process scripting, which is a type of process scripting whereby the imputed data, the imputed script, the injected JavaScript code is reflected off of the browser side. That is, um, the the response gotten from that input includes the imputed data into the into the website. So just like when you flash a light onto a mirror and light is reflected back to you, that's what reflected process picking is all about. It's a web application vulnerability and the the malicious, if the hackers actually exploit this vulnerability by using the vulnerable website to attack the user, yes, by stealing their session cookies, stealing user credentials and installing dangerous malwares onto into their browser and their computer system remotely. So I'll be walking you through the story of two Aka friends, Ifoma and Shalom, who would actually exploit a vulnerable website by, by bypassing the content security policy, which is supposed to be like a guardman. We'll be talking about that in a while. Yes, so they'll be exploiting this website, attaching an XSS vector, a query string, into the URL in which they can send out by using social engineering methods whereby people will click on that link and the malicious JavaScript code would be executed on their browser. So now we'll be sharing our screen. Yes, so this is a vulnerable web application. Sorry, it's taking time to load. So this is a vulnerable web application whereby Ifoma, who is a who is um Shalom's friend and Aka would actually impute an HTML tag as she does around website to check if it is vulnerable to to what give it acts on attack give it acts on HTML code and as you can see she imputed as and as you can see she imputed a job a an HTML bot tag and this website actually acted on it she informs the former she informed Shalom who comes to the website tries to tries to impute a JavaScript code to in order to get a an error alert and a pop-up box in order to get a pop-up box on doing this, she's she's typing in her code presently. On doing this, she notices that the web browser did not actually give her the alert box she was supposed to get. Instead, the web the, the web application only searched for the image. Then she goes a step ahead to click on the the F12 button, the, the function F, the function 12 button to check out the barcode of this website. Then she notices that there is actually the content security policy directive, which is preventing her from injecting a JavaScript code. Then what's, what's next for Shalom? Shalom then goes to the, Shalom then goes to Bobsuit, which is the Bobsuit proxy, which is a, Shalom then goes to the Bob Suit Proxy. Shalom then goes to the Bob Suit Proxy, which is a which is actually a tool in web application vulnerability testing to intercept requests and manipulate requests. So she imputes this JavaScript code again. She switches on an intercept in order to intercept this request. She clicks on the set button. Then she forwards the request in order to get, she forwards the request in order to get the response headers. Then she sees that there is the
Then she sees that the content security policy is in place, which has some directives, such as the default source, which which this content security policy is a security measure whereby the browser decides what the browser the, the web application decides what scripts are, are going to be run will be run in the website in the on the website. So we have the, the script SRC only decides what resource the script the JavaScript code that can be run on the website is from. So she's going to override this script source by using the script element by using the script element code. So she's going to switch off the intercepts now to bypass this she's going to switch up Switch of the intercept to, to bypass the to bypass the SCSP policy. So we are back to our website now. We are back to our website now, and she's going to be typing in. going to be typing in a code to actually overwrite this script source this script source javascript code by so she's going to be typing in that now by inserting the unsafe inline the unsafe inline code is supposed to the unsafe inline script is supposed to enable javascript the unsafe inline is supposed to enable javascript code into HTML headers. So she has successfully done this by insert, inserting that code which contained your safe inline header. And now Shalom and her friend Ifoma can now can now attack this website and send the the manipulated URL which has the query string attached to it. As you can see the website gave us an alert which we will click OK on. So this is, it has reflected back to us what we imputed, which was an alert one code. So um, Amina, now who is against the two of them, will be telling us how to prevent the XSS attack, the infected XSS attack. Thank you, Bukhariwa. To protect against cross-site scripting attack, education is number one key. In the sense that everyone involved in building the website or web application must be aware of the risk of um, prop sites at a prop, prop site scripting attack. Also, scan your website or web application regularly, and developers must correct the code to eliminate vulnerability. As an individual, be mindful of what to click on and always try to update your software regularly. Whitelist values by restricting values in the data store to only permit known good values. Also, input, sanit input sanitization, which involve checking which involve checking and um, input sanitization, which involve checking and um, cleaning inputs from users before being, before being processed by web server. And lastly, set the HTTP only flag for cookies so that it won't be accessible via client side JavaScript. Yes, and in conclusion, as I said earlier, that social engineering is used to send these links to people. We should know that websites nowadays, one in three websites are vulnerable to the reflected SSS attack. So please let's endeavor to be vigilant and have the eagle's eyes where we are clicking on URL links. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Let's give him a round of applause. Let's give him a round of applause. Well done, well done, girls. Well done. That was a beautiful presentation. And I like how you storified it, making us helping us walk through what the realities are and how this actually plays out in real life. Well done. Uh, okay, so we're going to be having Team Code Brigade Enugu now take the stage. Um, Team Code Brigade Enugu, how are you doing today? Yeah, doing fine, man. Okay, great. Smile now. I know I've scolded <laughs> people backstage. <laughs> Okay, good. So that will help you relax. Great. So what is your name? What tell us your names and what you'll be speaking to us about? Good day, all. We're at Team Code Brigade in Ubu Hall. My name is Judith. We'll be taking you guys on Linus Operating. Okay, so I actually asked to know everybody's name. I asked to know everybody's name. Okay. Okay. So before My you start your presentation, let's interact first. Yes. So your name, tell us your name. 
<laughs> My name is Fever. You don't know who can I am. Oh, you need to cheat me. And I'm Judith. Okay, great. So, um, so I I know that you want to speak to us about something. What did you say you want to speak to us about? Want to talk about lines operating system hardening. Hardening. Okay, great. So you have the floor. Oh, no, but before you go on, I was going to say you have the floor, but who is your coach? Tell us about your coach. So, our coach is Chinua, Chinua Kachi. Okay. And he really did a great work. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll prove you. We'll prove you to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so you... Excellent. So you have the stage. Go ahead. Thank you. As I said earlier, we'll be taking you guys on Linux operating system hardly. We are going to be working on three methods. One, enabling a configuring system updates and upgrade. Two, disabling root login access. Three, configuring host firewall. Hardly, hardly, hardly. What is hardly? Hardly means to secure your operating system. The purpose of system hardening is to eliminate as many security risks as possible. My colleagues and I will be using Ubuntu to demonstrate. But before then, I would like to walk you guys through on some keywords and its meaning for better understanding. One, the port. What's the port? A port. What's the port? Nmap. Nmap, which is a software application that can scan for available ports. While a port is like a door through which connections can be established. The last but not the least, the sudo. Sudo is a command that allows you to run a program with the security privilege of another users. My amazing colleagues here will be taking you guys on the practical aspect. Stay tuned and be open-minded to learn new things. Thank you. Okay, I will be walking you through en enabling and configuring updates and upgrade. First of all, I will, I will show you the commands that you need to update your system. First, I will type sudo. Apt. Yeah, it's asking me for my password. Yeah, as you can see, we are updating the, uh, the operating system. What is the reason for this update? Updates can add a new feature to your operating system and remove outdated out, and remove outdated ones. And every Linux user always wants to want to update to the latest version of, of a software due to some patch some patch security flaws. After this, I will walk you through upgrade. Then for upgrade, these are the commands that you have to run to, to upgrade your operating system. Yeah, as you can see, the, the operating system is upgrading, but due to time, but due to time, we cannot allow it to finish. But what what's upgrade? What's upgrade all about? Upgrade, upgrade can upgrade is used to make our operating system safer and keep hacker away from exploiting from exploiting vulnerable spots. For the for the, for for time and time will not allow me to allow it to finish upgrade. I have to I have to hand over to my colleague. Oh. Okay, I'll be taking I'll be taking you guys on the second step, which is um disabling root access login, root login access. We all know that Linus machine comes with a root account. And the root account is like a, is a super account, which which has the highest access, which has the highest access rights to system administration. What does it mean? It means that we can perform major major tasks and operations with this account. 
Imagine if the password to your to the root account gets into the wrong hands, it can cause a major problem. So in order to, in order to avoid that, we need to disable the, uh, the password. We know that, and as we all know that, uh, criminals are hackers are intelligent criminals, which comes out with various ways to to bypass your security in your operating system. So imagine if you have, even if you have an, a strong password for your root account, they can easily use this command to enter into it. Sudo password. Sudo password. Mm -hmm. No password roots. Enter. It asks for a new password. The hacker can easily impute a new password, gaining and thereby gaining access into your into your operating system, then log you out, which is which as you can see is a very big disadvantage on our part. So in order to avoid every Tom, Dick, and Harry into having access into your operating system, we need to disable it. And it is my duty as a cyber aware fellow to be to disable this root account. So I'll be using this, I'll be using this this um, command to disable it. sudo password space hyphen dl root. It shows it's showing me password expiry information change, which means that I have I have I have disabled the account, the password to the root account password. But if I want to be sure that I've actually disabled it, I'll just type in the 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 command su root to ask for the password that I previously used before. So I will put my previous password and enter it. A moment, please. If you show authentication failure, that means that I have successfully disabled the root account password. And I wonder my my colleague will take over from here. Thank you very much. I'll be talking on fire on the third uh, method for um, handling our operating system, the Linux operating system, which is configuring host firewall. What is a firewall? A firewall is a network security software that monitor and that monitor and filters incoming and outgoing um, traffic based on predetermined set of rules. Ubuntu had okay. UFW is a software is a software available on Linux that provides the um, firewall services. So now I'm going to show you how to install your firewall and then how to uh, how to make use of your firewall. So the first command we'll use will first of all install it. That's if it's not yet installed. But for my system, it's already installed. But the command to use is sudo apt install ufw. Sorry. This is the command for it, but I'm not going to be going going through that because I already um I already have it installed. So I'm going to check for its status. So I'm going to be using sudo ufw status. Sorry. So enter. Oh, it's active. Okay. But let's just turn this to inactive. And I want to show you, I want to show you guys something. So, okay, this, okay, this is, okay, the firewall is already active, but I want to take, show you guys something. We are going to go to, okay, we are going to use another um, operating system to show you something, to see that all these, all these, um, all these services that are open, you see that all these services that are open are open to other other operating system, both trusted and untrusted operating system. But let's we are going to be using PowerShell for this. So I'm going to open my PowerShell now. But before we do that, we have to find out the um, IP address for this system. So we're going to be doing if config. Sorry, yeah. IF. So we're doing the IF config on the, our Ubuntu. So our, our 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 IP address is this. So we're going to be running an mmap scan of the Ubuntu on PowerShell. So we're going to be using the command mmap, then the IP address.
Então. So you see, it shows that this SS um, port 22 is open and port here, then port 22 is also open here. So that means that these ports that are open, any, any, any um, computer from outside can connect to it. So now we are going to be disabling, now we are going to be disabling um, one of these ports. We're going to be disabling the HTTP. So back to my Ubuntu. I'm going to press sudo ufw deny deny 80. Then we'll press enter. Rule updated. So we're going to go back to this place and see if this thing took effect. So now it's showing that it's only HTTP that is open. So if you wish to block any any port from this, you can use the, the, the deny to deny any of this, or you can press allow to allow anyone. Thank you very much for listening. We Thank hope you. that you go back and try this out on your Ubuntu. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent word. I mean, that, that was, that was, uh, please keep the applauses coming. Please keep the applauses coming. That was a, a very impressive, very technical presentation, but you manage to actually pull through and pull through saying the facts and actually saying the correct thing. Well done. Well done, girls. Thank you did you, amazing. Man. Well done. Thank you deserve you, it. Give you, yourselves man. a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Somebody is even somebody is saying here that you know, very beautiful presentation from Code Brigade Edu. Thanks for the firewall knowledge upgrade. Really impressed. They say, wow, this one sounds like ambulance. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> and of course, amazing presentation. So, yeah, you've got a lot of thumbs up. <laughs> Uh, from your fellows and people watching from outside that are not connected to Cyber Girls directly. Thank you. So well done, girls. Yeah. So great. We have up next yet another question. Beautiful. Um, so we have up next another impressive team. Uh, team Code Brigade from Adamawa. But before we go any further, I want to say a big thank you to your coach. Uh, um, I mean, the coach for... Um, team uh for enugu who is chinoa Chino, you did an amazing job and we can see it out there um with the work you're doing and with every other coach please every girl presenting next you have to acknowledge your coaches because your coaches are the reason you have this much knowledge this early well done to all our coaches we're going to be acknowledging them especially during this uh, uh before the end of this open day but i want to say thank you first and foremost to enugu who, uh, enugu's coach which we just heard from so up next we're having team um Team Code Brigade at Damawa. How are you doing, girls? Good afternoon, ma'am. We are fine. Oh, great. So let's know your names. What are your names? Introduce yourselves. Um, I'm Kona Solomon Kaja. And here with me is Tanyisu Robert. Tanyisu! And, so, uh, 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 and my girl. What did you say that was again? I like the way you sounded. Say the full thing. Counter. Thank you, Robert. Okay. Counter. 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 Counter is always asking all of the questions. Counter is always asking questions. And I love your spirit for that. Great. At least you're smiling. I want you to smile and relax. Don't try to lie to your chair. <laughs> you're going to do this very well. Okay. So okay. what are you going to be speaking to us about? I know that you guys have a string. You're just throwing all stuff around. <laughs> um uh security monitoring in adamawa hub so some of your girls some of your fellows in your hub have said some things before you so what are you showing us that's different from them um thank you miss confidence mm -hmm. so now uh -huh. we're gonna be testing the alert set by our team our colleagues okay. and box crashers by generating okay. an event oh nice that's very interesting so you see there's a continuity and i like what your hub did with the continuity showing us like a chain of things and how they're connected from installing, you know, to setting up, um, to integrating, and then you are testing that alert. So that's it. You have the floor. Go ahead. All right. All right. All right. Now we're going to share our screen. Thank you. 
Um, thank you. We'll be generating an event using SLS script processing analyzing an event and analyzing the event using Splunk. But before that, we, we're going to be running Wimic, which is a utility command prompt. It executes a process. It's a command prompt that has URL. What is Wimic? Wimic is a short form for Windows Management Interface Command. Okay, to execute you, we are going to we are going to write to score we make let's execute. Then we search. Okay, it's showing us no event sampling. But first, we're going to generate an event by running the code. That's the XLS uh, script in our command prompt. Um, okay, we're going to use we're using this link to generate the code. by copying it and then testing it in our search bar. It's not a joy. Okay, now we're getting started. We scroll down. SLS file. Okay, we copy this SLS script processing. Then we run it in our command prompt. After passing it in our command prompt, then you hit enter. It will run the process list. Okay, it's showing us process denied because this URL has ever been used to launch an, a malicious attack. So our Windows and Defender is showing it's blocking the threat. So we now offer our Windows Defender to run it smoothly. So 
after run often the window defender will still run the code So now we are going to close our window defender because it's because of the window defender that the 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 code is not running. Yes. Okay. Um, since the winter defender will not um allow us to run the court, we will now press on we will now click on star and then search for our alert if the alert is setting well. So now here is here is all the events that take place here, all the information. And here we have the command line and we also have the source type. So I'll now scroll down, scroll down to check, to 
to check the alert. Here is the last event that our integrating team box crashes. Box crashes just did. And And here is so is showing the log name, Microsoft Windows Sysmon Operational. Um, here is the event code. This is source type. On source type, it shows the actual structure of the data, which is main event log. As the WIMIC, um, we try running the WIMIC code, but it's it's, it doesn't, the Windows Defender doesn't allow, allow so it's not showing us the Windows event log. Well, I think we have come to the end of our own um, practical because the event, the, the, the file defender did not allow us to run our code. So um, this is the end. Thank you so much, team Code Brigade and Damawa. Let's give them a round of applause. Excellent, excellent. Let's give a round of applause. Beautiful. Okay, so just as a learning, maybe next time you just sorry, not next time, but when you go back, ensure that you find what the issue was with that didn't let you run your code and what you would have done to bypass that. Okay, great. So we're going to take um, uh, possibly our last presentation from for today, which will be from Team Code Brigade Kogi. How are you doing, girls? Fine, thank, Fine, thank you, you, ma. Oh, excellent. So tell us your name and what you're going to be doing for doing today. Hello. Welcome, everyone, to another wonderful open day. My name is Olayin for Open Information, and my colleagues there with me are Umar Reminat and Bayadi Marvelous. We will be showing you how to enumerate compromise targets using limp Trust okay. me, this time around, we're going to be mind-blowing. Let me ah, give it over Okay, not yet. Remember, I said we are going to be chatting. Okay, so um, tell us about your coach. Okay. Who is your coach? Our coach name is Mr. Awa. He's a nice, gentle, and easygoing man. Oh, <laughs> great. So, what has the coaching session been like? Has been wonderful. interesting, wonderful, and we've been learning a lot of new stuff. Excellent. So, what would you like to say to him? Thank you, Mr. Awa. Thank you so much, Mr. Awa. You did an amazing job. And I see how confident the girls are coming. They say, ah, I want to, want to show you people. Okay. So we are ready. Show us. <laughs> Go ahead. You have the floor. <laughs> okay. So now we are going to start sharing our screen. But before then, we'd like to explain what enumeration means. Enumeration is the process of extracting username, hostname, IP address, password, and other sensitive information. Attackers use this information to identify vulnerabilities, backdoors, or weak areas. Then it is being 
counted and assessed, which is the enumeration process before it is being exploited. Okay, Thank so you. first, for us to carry out this enumeration process, we need to first of all compromise our targeted system, as it, that is to get a remote access to the targeted system. The first step to take is for us to get our metasploitable IP address by going over to our metasploitable and log in into our metasploitable. To get our metasploitable IP address. So here is our metasploit. Here is our metasploit. So for us to get our IP address, we need to log into our metasploit by typing our password and our username, which is um, MSF admin, and then our username as MSF admin. Yes. Yeah, after, then after that, we need to get our IP address. For us to get our IP address, we'll type in I have config to get our IP address. We, we From there, your, we, we can't see your metasploit. We can't see your, what you're showing us. We can only see the StreamYard page. Okay, ma. So you're not sharing the right screen. That's what it means. Okay, ma. So we'll go over. Minimize. We are trying to launch our metasploitable machine. Okay, now can you see now? Us? Ma, can you see us metasploitable interface now? The thing is, what you can see on the StreamYard window is what we can also see. So maybe you open the StreamYard window and check if what you're doing is correct. Okay. Because we, we are showing you exactly what you're showing us. Okay. So we are trying to log into our metasploitable for us to get our uh, metasploitable IP address. So we log into our metasploitable by putting our login as MSF admin. Okay, then our password MSF admin also. You're not showing us your screen or. Oh. Yeah. Not sure. not sure. what is happening is that you are you didn't share the right screen okay you're still ma. showing us you're still showing yes. us stream yard okay ma so we'll start sharing all over again Ma, can you see our screen now? Okay, so we'll put in our password as MSF admin. MSF admin as our, our username. We we'll press enter, then our password. Now, for us to get our IP address, we type in IF config. As you can see, we've gotten our, our, our metasploitable IP address, which is 192.168.98.129. Now, we need to go over to our Kali VM. For us to gain access to the compromised system. Okay, here is our Kali VM. So I'll just run over over this. I'll run over this. So for us to log into our 
For us to log into our Kali, we need to log the right in by thing. using the command MSF sharing. console. Now you can see the 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 we've, we've logged into our Kali VM. Code Brigade, you're now not from showing here, us the right thing. One, we have to we have to search for our real ILC by using the command search. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to share the right screen. Share. Okay, here is our Kali VM. We've logged into it already because of time factor. We've logged in and now we need to search for our Unreal ILC by using the command search on real ILC to search for the exploits. We've seen the exploits and then we we'll, for us to for us to enter into the exploit, we we'll use the command use exploits units slash ILC slash Unreal ILC. From there we can see that our out hosts and we can also see our output. From what we can see, our out host is not set while our output is set. Output is the targeted port while the out host is the IP address of the targeted host. So we need to set our how host. And how do we set that? By using the command set our host together with our IP address. And then we we'll click on enter for us to get our how host. You can see here that we've already set our how host. We also need to find out, to, we need a payload for this. So for us to get a compatible payload with this, we need to type show payload. So after typing show payload, we saw about 11 payload that is compatible with, with this. So let's we'll pick payload number five as our payload to use. So we've we'll set our payload, as you can see, the payload is already set. So now we need to show options again to see whatever we need to set again. From here, we can see our arrows is set. Our hard part is also set. So our help host, you can see our help host is not yet set. Our help port is set. Now, what is the help host? The help host is the IP address of the listening machine, while the help port is the listening port. So for us to set our help host, we need our um, the IP address of our Kali. And for us to do that, we we'll type the command ifconfig. And after typing the command ifconfig, you can see our our IP the IP address of our Kali machine. And from then, we need to set the head host by typing the command set L host. Set L host together with the IP address of the Kali machine. From there, you can see it. Now, we we'll finally set the L host. But we also need to be sure that everything has been set. So what we do is that we show options again. After showing options, we see the L host is set, the L port is set, the R host is set to the L the L port too is also set, so everything is set. The next thing to do is to run. So while running, we need to go over to our Kali machine for us to carry out the, the enumeration process using Limpy. I'll hand over to my colleague to take over from here. Yeah, Limpy, it is a tool used for enumeration for all possible methods to elevate privilege in line of system. One person about Limpy is that it does not have any dependency. Limpy was created by Karopi. Now, I will hand over to my colleague as she shows you the practical aspect of the whole thing. Thank you. We need to navigate Limpid into this system by pressing this command. Then we create oh, we create um, Limpid into this system by, by setting this command. Then we navigate into this system. Then we download Limpid using this command. You can see the Limpid is downloading. Then we set our Python web server using sudo python. Our password. Our Python web server is set. We have to go back to our meta exploit table. And sorry, meta exploit. Then we type this command curl the IP address of the Kali machine we are on now. Online two dot one six eight dot nine eight dot nine eight dot one two eight slash limpid 
dot sh sh means share the share enable us to download the input into the system try enter dot Message. Well, finding it difficult to download the link into the system. Okay. So for now, you can see this is our We have set our web, web um, Python web server. Limpid can be used to enumerate um, um, files, attractive files in our systems. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jim Kogi. That was a fantastic presentation. And even if you run into issues, are we listening? Are we listening? Are we listening to me? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah, you do. Hello, ma. Yes, I can hear Hello, you. Hello, ma. I can hear you. Okay, okay ma. Well done, girls. So, well done. Well done. You did fantastic. I know that you ran into an issue, but we see that you understand what you're doing. And after this presentation, you can sort out what the issue was, okay? But I want to say well done. Um, you can see even the comments coming in that this was amazing. A lot of people were learning from you. So fantastic. Well done, girls. Don't be down. I can see your face. Good. Let's clap for them. Let's clap for them. Fantastic. So well done, Team Code Begin. You closed out the show fantastically well. And thank you so much to everyone that has been, you know, following us all the while. Uh, but we want to take this opportunity to also thank our coaches. Can we? Can we? Okay, so um, team, team, um, team. Uh, okay, they've muted their mics. Great. Okay, so I want to say a very big thank you to our coaches that are making this magic happen. I mean, we cannot possibly thank them enough. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Ikali, the Ikalia that is actually coaching us, coaching the girls in New York all the way from the United Kingdom. Thank you so much, uh, Mohammed Alkerji, for also doing the great work you're doing with the Kaduna girls. We just found out right now that they actually shut down all telecommunication in Kaduna. That's why all of the girls have not been able to uh, to join. There's no, the, all the networks are down currently in Kaduna um, as an order from the government. Um, we want to also thank um, Oluwa Tobi NS for all the great work he did in Adamawa. Adama girls came out excellently. Thank you so much. We thank Chino Akachi for the amazing work he did in Enugu. 
we thank Awa Ishaku for the great work he did with some of the girls in um, with some of the girls in Adamawa. We want to also specifically thank um, um, Matthias Ajibola for the great work he's been doing with the girls in. You see, the girls are even clapping. The great work he did with the girls in Krasiva State. I'm sure he, he loves them and they love him so much as well. Thank you so much, Matthias. For the amazing work you, you volunteered your time for two whole months we don't take that for granted at all the same thing with more he's been volunteering his time for two whole months no payment whatsoever we also want to thank samalia Atson for the great work he did with some of the with the girls in kogi amazing work kogi girls where are you give your your coach a round of applause he did amazing with you people and i am so proud please where is the round where is the clapping now if you are not clapping where is the clapping uh, 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 hey, good clap for your coaches fantastic 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 so we want to say a very big thank you to them for all of the great work they they have been doing so far uh you know with the girls and we are very very grateful so we have come to the end of today's open day that's day one um tomorrow is same time uh, you know same place and we'll be having another set of girls and some of the girls who could not present today um, hopefully, if they allow the telecom, if the telecommunications is restored in Kaduna, they can join us tomorrow and show us the amazing stuff they have. But tomorrow is another day. I want to say thank you so much to everyone that has joined us from YouTube and from um, from YouTube and from Twitter. I'm oh, sorry, from YouTube and from um, from uh, LinkedIn. We say thank you so much for spending your time with us. Bye for now.